This is the Colonel Rad Alert. Civil defense information will be broadcast at 640. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Y2K. How can we prepare? Stop a few of their machines and radios. Throw them into darkness for a few hours. We are fighting for our lives. My family must survive. Boom. For five years. Thousand gallons of gas. Air filtration. Water filtration. Coming at you from the frozen tundra that is East Central Alberta, Canada. Streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble, and Odyssey. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I am Toolman Tim. Today is April the 14th, 2023, and this is episode 290 of the Workshop Podcast. In just a moment, I will be bringing on my beautiful other half. <laughs> I see Yozik in there already. He looks like he's excited. We're going to talk about some films tonight. Uh, last minute change we'll talk about. Anyway, let's get the announcements out of the way. Number one, the Telegram group. You guys know I love it. We tried topics over there. It worked for a minute and then it didn't work. So we're back to the good old Telegram group. Uh, maybe when it gets bigger, well, whatever. But the cool thing is we're well over 200 members and it's just a small family of delinquents where we share all our information. So come by, join it. Links in the description tonight. Number two is the Patch of the Month Club, which just went out. Ah, that one was upside down. Let's try that again. Just went out. I think it was two days ago, actually. So if you're wondering, there's one. Two is one. One is none. Three is a guarantee. Uh, this month that's coming out is uh, was inspired by something Amy Dingman said in a um, it was a live community feedback episode ages and ages ago. So I hope you look forward to getting that. But if you want to support the workshop, the easiest way to do that is patchofthemonth.co. And Ten bucks a month, hundred dollars a year, or I'll also take lightning. Uh, and if we meet in person, we can always barter. I like that too. So finally, if you want to meet up in person, I believe there's still a couple of tickets left. LFTN, Living Free Tennessee Workshop, Spring Workshop. My notes say 16 days from today, but it's a lot less than that now. So <laughs> we're leaving pretty soon. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a great old time. And um, <laughs> RPA says, um, was off Telegram for a couple of days, had over a thousand notifications for your channel. <laughs> and I think what were we talking about the other day that was, wasn't very important, but it was a, we had a great conversation. So <laughs> thanks, man. Um, yeah. So April 27th to 29th, 500 bucks or 475 if you pay in Bitcoin. And it includes all your meals, all your camping and all the fellowship that you can absolutely handle, including some incredible speakers. So I'm excited. And finally, today's tool is the Klein Voltage Pen. It's probably saved my butt a couple of times, but it's just one of those tiny little things for like less than 30 bucks. You point it at a line, touch a line, and it tells you if it's hot or not. Now, don't take it as the gospel, but it's certainly a great tool. I love it. Links in the description today. And with that, let's bring on my beautiful other half. Hey, Mrs. Cook, how are you? I'm good. Good. Awfully quiet tonight. Haven't been doing nothing. Just sleeping over here or what? I'm just listening to you ramble. Yeah, listen to me ramble. She always says it. So, <laughs> I, Oh, hey, look who's here. Jaggy Thistle, my uh, missus, just came back from the, uh, the the land over yonder of your area, Jaggy. Never made it up to Scotland yet, but uh, hopefully next year we're going to go, aren't we're we? We're planning a trip next year. And I've already told her that if I go with her, just her and I, we have to go and see Mr. Jaggy, don't we? Oh, we're going to Scotland. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So Yozik really wants me to launch a sticker of the month club as well. So we probably should, shouldn't we? Yes, um, we will definitely. It is coming, Yozik, I promise. There's something even more exciting. I don't know. Anyway, getting ready. I'm going to announce it at Living Free in Tennessee. Um, you guys probably have an idea of what it's going to be, but it's going to go live and I'm not going to give it away yet, but I am going to tease it just a little bit, aren't we? So how's your week been, sweetheart? Uh Busy. It was Busy? my first week back. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was a long week. You started on Wednesday, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> we ended but up... we crammed like five days of work into three. So it was pretty busy. We're looking the right way tonight. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, we're good. So, yep. yep. Exactly. Perfect. All right. Uh, we tried to play with the lighting a little bit tonight to see if it would work better or worse. I don't know. Well, maybe a little better. You're a little darker. I'm yep. a little less pale. So there we are. <laughs> Yozik says more exciting than stickers. Your own tool line. I don't know. That would be awesome. Fuck yeah. Anyway, no. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I can't give it away yet because I'm going to announce it at 
uh, Nicole's workshop during my presentation. Well, I'm, you know, anyway, so it's going to be good. We're going to have a great time. Yeah. I'm excited. We're going to go on a tour of the um, bourbon distillery, the Buffalo Trace one on our way down through. We're going to meet up with Brian and Corey and I think Carrie as well. And we're going to go walk our land for the first time. You excited about that? Yeah, I am. Yeah, me too. Excited about Taking a long needed vacation for you that you haven't had in forever. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been a while. <laughs> Haas says, I need to get a damn hustle going uh, so that I don't have to work weekends. I get you. It's tough, isn't it? Mm. You know, um, a father wants to, you want to build something great. You got to work your ass off, but you want to get to the point where you don't necessarily, where you have um, a little bit of flexibility in your schedule. So, Yeah. Uh, anything I can do to encourage you or kick you in the ass, Hoss, let me know. And we, we will, won't we? Yeah. It takes a while to get there, though. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, shit. That would be awesome. I don't think I can. Well, I probably can, but I don't necessarily. I mean, technically, bourbon can't come from Canada. So it would have to be a white labeled product from the U.S. But Jesus, that would be well, awesome. It could be bourbon but not bourbon well there is so there is a bourbon that comes from alberta that spells it something along the lines of b b o o b u r n like boobern yeah. boobern i don't know yeah. anyway but yeah because it has to be yeah. uh aged in charred new charred oak barrels in the united states so mm -hmm. just kind of change a a different uh what do you call it yeah i mean a couple could, letters it could be you know we could have you know, a corn-based whiskey that's aged in charred new oak barrels, but it just couldn't be called bourbon per se. So yeah. there is that, but that's okay. So tonight we were starting to prep for this episode and it was just one of them that I just wasn't feeling it all day. There that is a great fucking idea, Yozik. <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> yes, because well, anyway, everybody gets the joke, right? So we're putting the show together and if anybody's disappointed, this was supposed to be our top conspiracy film episode. We just didn't have enough great stuff to pull and, from, did and we? And I don't like conspiracy movies. No, I, so. I know you don't. So I was, you know what? I said, well, we're going to swap it up. So about two hours ago, we completely changed the idea for the show. And now we're doing our favorite, we're going to call it Outbreak Films. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to try not to touch on a couple of films we touched in the past, but if we do, that's okay. I, I tried not to pick any from the yeah. past, but I was going to title this. Got one, I was going to title this our top outbreak films, not titled outbreak. Is that proper? Did you put outbreak on your list? I'm not mm -hmm. telling you, but <laughs> the title's not going to work. <laughs> so. Jag, yeah, could do Tennessee whiskey. That's a great idea. Yeah. And Jaggy says single malt for me, no ice. I, depending on where it comes from, um, the PD single malt scotch. I'm not a fan of. But I was over at a friend's house the other day. He pulled out some single malt scotch and it was pretty good. Just tell him what I brought back from England. Oh, some, yeah. uh, I didn't even bring it over. Oh, so, you know what? Tomorrow night, I would be a more laid back episode. I don't know if it can get any more laid back than us just <laughs> sitting here chatting. But um, yeah, I'll pull out the the gin and the scotch and the mead you brought back from the, yeah. Plus, she also brought me back some Tennessee bourbon. So yeah. that was awesome. So. Well, the mead, uh, well, Jaggy would know the mead came from uh, Hampton Court. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. Toolman Tim's Alberta Mash Bourbon. We could even use um, Tabor Corn, which Alberta is famous for. So there, there you, go. you go. Oh, Chris Dixon, if you're listening, buddy, we need to do this. This would be awesome. <laughs> ice aged barrels. There you go. It'd be like um, ice wine. But yeah. We'd, yep. We'd, uh, we'd age it outdoors in the Alberta cold and heat. And it would, uh, yeah, it would probably, we could even freeze distill it perhaps because um, whiskey does freeze at. And it gets cold enough. So. Yeah. What is it? Minus 30 or something it freezes at? I forget. So. I'm not sure. Hmm. I think you had a bottle in the truck that froze that one day, didn't it? When we were in the city. Oh, or maybe. You were worried yeah, about really, it freezing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, I don't know why I would have a bottle in the truck, but anyway, no. We well, would... bought it up in the city. <laughs> I know. I'm just giving, just busting your balls, Mrs. Cook. Relax. Jesus. Grumpy tonight, guys. I'm in trouble. So here we go. Do you want to go with your. So anyway, what are we talking about tonight? Our favorite outbreak films. Yes. Um, which I figure we're far enough past the, um, <laughs> the, the, the worldwide virus of unknown origin that we can uh, have a great conversation about outbreaks, can't we, hon? Yes. Would you like to go first? Um, so are we going to do them in order? We're we just going to do them randomly. Did you do um, five through one or did you? No, just, I no? just did them randomly. Okay. So we each picked five 
And then I also have, of course, some honorable mentions. Uh, no, I have five, but I have a couple honorable mentions. Too. So RPA says Doomsday. From I think we watched that, didn't we? Um, I have. Let me bring it up here. I might so have. I think that's that, the one with the red and white cover, I believe. Um, I'm sure that you, I think you got me to watch. Yeah, there it is. Remember? I uh, got Bob Hoskins in it. Was that the guy that played Mario or am I crazy? Yeah, I don't I remember he, yeah. watching that one. And it was, anyway, uh, who's in it? Uh, yeah, Bob Hoskins. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure we saw it years ago. Oh, probably. But uh, yeah, there's the I don't recognize the cover. it. Let's, uh, yeah. Here I am looking at a screen that I'm not sharing with you guys. So let's bring that up for a minute. And uh, if anybody's seen this one while we're talking, there it is, Doomsday. Yeah, I vaguely, vaguely remember that, but. I know we watched it. It's, I'm uh, trying, but I, I don't quite I remember. Think, yeah, it was a yeah. There was pandemic kind of. I think maybe it turned into a bit of a zombie thing. You can tell the effects weren't great even for 2008, mm -hmm. right? So, but yeah, so it's there. Let's uh, remove that in the background. All right. So, what was your first pick there, Darlin? Um, I'll do honor honorable mention. Oh, you gonna first. okay? Yeah. Um, I know it's probably not the best movie out there, and it's probably like a guilty pleasure, but Bird Box. Oh, yeah. You know what? Okay. So if Nate's <laughs> listening, he's going to be like, son of a bitch, they're talking about shitty Netflix films again. So, yes, we are. Because we have, <laughs> we have I have, sorry, a soft spot in my heart for uh, shitty Netflix films. So yeah, why did as you long, pick? As long as you can watch it from beginning to end without hemming and hawing and wanting to turn it off. Like, it, you know what? It passes the time. When it's a shitty day outside and you got nothing else to watch and you've already watched Game of Thrones all the seasons 15 times and you just want something else to watch. But it's, I mean, it, yeah. it's as far fetched as they come. Yeah. But it wasn't nearly as bad as the, was it John Malkovich? The one he no, did? No, uh, John Malkovich was in Bird Box. Okay. Uh, it was uh, Stanley Tucci. You know, who, yeah. yeah. You know the poor man's John Malkovich or whatever. <laughs> Stanley Tucci. He did the one with like the pterodactyls or something. Yeah, like the with the birds. I can't yeah, remember that it was one. way worse. Yeah. So we'll we'll just do this while we're mm -hmm. looking here. So Bird Box, I liked. I, you know, I, I, I like, well. Okay, I didn't like okay, it. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but the premise behind it. Was it because like it kind of had a little bit of um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of M Night Shyamalan's The Happening. Yeah, which same type of thing. Like you, yep. something's attacking, but you don't know what it is. Right, right, and you can't. And and if you see it, then you're possessed by it. Um, but it, it's kind of like uh, but then it has a little bit of phantoms in it too. Right. Yes, with, it does. Um, and with, with Ben Affleck because you can hear it, right. And like it, and like it takes on. Did you say Ben Affleck? Is he in this? Or? Yeah, he no, he's in Phantoms. Oh, fan. Oh, yeah. sure, sure. Yep. Yeah, but yeah. like, uh, like, cause like when she's going down the river and stuff, like it like takes on voices and yes. and stuff. So it, it's kind of like, so like it never actually explains what it is, and but like it, it causes. But it's the same type people of thing. Are, like it causes. It is people, like the happening, right? Yeah, yeah, it causes people to kill themselves or do things. Like to die, right? Yeah, and, or to uh, take other people with them too, right? Yeah, but no, it was. I don't know. I I didn't mind it. I thought it was a pretty. It, it was pretty good. Like yeah. it wasn't like. I don't think I would have paid to go see it in the movie theater, but. And it was it a was completely. So okay. It was one of those that went crazy right away, and it yeah. didn't. Um, they didn't ever explain why it happened because that no. doesn't really matter, right? I didn't think anyway, and um, but it was yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, like and just horrible. yeah, like and I don't know, and it had, and had like a good cluster of actors in it, like. And I've always had yeah. I, I've had a soft spot for Sandra Bullock back in her speed days. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I she, I don't know, not to be. Oh, the hey uh, Nat, how are you? The book. So, are we talking about Bird Box? Because yeah, I, I think no, I, I think there is a book. Yeah, did not realize that. Thanks, Nat. I am going to. All the all these months later, I know Nat is Nat, and I still want to call him Nate. I don't because we have a Nate in our group. So if I ever do it again, Nat, you're you have permission to slap me when you if you're coming to prepper camp this year. So yeah, the descent. So the descent. Renegade says the same way the descent hooked you. When we watched that, do you remember that? That's the underground cave movie. Yeah, where in the end there, like it was ended up her being. I th yeah, yeah, I think like so. it was like all delusion or whatever. Uh, is that the know. one where like her son and her daughter get killed in the? in the no i think the that, jeep in the beginning 
and then she goes to underground caves with her friends and then she yeah. finds out the friend was cheating with the husband I th- and then and then it ends up like she was the one that was doing all the killing and there wasn't actually any animals or, or... no i think in the descent it's they unleash yeah. like i could be wrong josh correct me if i am but i think there's actual creatures down in the caves Oh, watch the alternate end. Okay, so yeah. maybe we're both yeah, right. Yeah, because then. like it shows her coming out of the ground. Right. And then she kind of has like flashbacks of her being the creatures and there wasn't actually any creatures. Shit, I never, okay. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty yep. sure that was the same one, but I'm not sure. Jo- Josh knows how to answer a woman's question. Yep, you're right, honey. <laughs> so there's the silence. That was the shitty version of Bird Box. So, yeah. Or a, a yeah, kind of a, I don't know if I should have that film play. Uh, anyway, whatever. They kick it they kick it so all right yeah so um yeah the bird box was fun it it was um i guess the downside to it was it felt derivative of the quiet place because and they were both films being made at the same time with very similar premises but i'm i'm pretty sure well the quiet place was obviously way more yeah um well received which we we of course appreciate a lot more so like I like Sandra Bullock, but I don't know. I think she's kind of she's kind of like taking these lesser roles, right? And I, she kind of she's kind of reminding me a little a little bit of what uh, Bruce Willis did, just yeah. taking all these yep. roles just to make a paycheck. And can I? I'm I don't want to sound like that guy, but she, it almost felt like she was just a tad old to play that part. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to, I'm not, it's just well, legitimate, she's in her, she's you know, in her late fifties. Yeah. She? She's yeah. in her fifties to yeah, have, like, twi- it's possible. I get it. I yeah. know, but she was great in the role and mm-hmm. she played that kind of, um, what would you call it? Like a stuck up business person that was, or, or self and in, self involved, a self involved. Yeah. 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 And then they, you know, spoiler alert, kill off Sarah Paulson in like the first three minutes of the movie. So <laughs> there was that, but um, yeah, and an oldie but a goodie, Cassandra Crossing. You ever seen that one? No, well, we'll look that one up because I don't know that one. And I, I knew we couldn't go without a Zombie Land mention. <laughs> well, Zombie Land's not on my list. Nope, mine either tonight. Yeah. But I do have plans at some point when we can fit it in to do a Rules of Zombie Land uh, episode. So it, it's coming. But all right, so my first one in no particular order was The Crazies. Oh, don't I love The Crazies? Well, I have that one on do my too. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we're not really going to, we're just, we just picked some and we're going to talk about them because yeah, so some I'll of them just are take it off to, my list. So we're sure. not going to put it on there. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen the crazies, it has another one of my favorite male actors <laughs> <laughs> other than Brad Pitt. Um, Timothy Oliphant, I think yeah. is just fucking awesome. That dude, this movie is one of those that goes balls to the wall from the second it starts from the opening scene at the, um, the baseball field. Yeah. And it doesn't give up the whole time. Whoops. We don't want to go full screen layout there. Bring this back a little bit. There we are. So yes. Um, if you have anybody out there seen it, uh, Oh, double jeopardy. What? Oh, well, that's was, like nineties. Was she in that? Because I know, uh, yeah, I think wasn't that the one with Ashley Judd was in double jeopardy, right? I don't know. I don't know how I remember that, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, she hasn't. Yeah. Um, and then she had that one where um, numbers, was it called numbers? Remember? Oh uh, yeah. She, she yeah. hasn't done a lot of poor thing, a lot of good serious films, unless you like the blind side. And of course Hollywood's wow. turned on that now. So yeah. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it is, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So Timothy Oliphant is a small town sheriff. Turns out that there's a virus released in the atmosphere just above their town. Well, no, it was from the plane crash. Right, plane crash, yes. And so it's one of the... I love the film because it has a government conspiracy, a cover-up, and basically you've got the entire um, government coming in trying to kill everyone, right? Well, because... Well, because when the plane crashed, it got into the water. Right. Yeah. And that hit people really quick. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, let's see if we can find... So I I don't want to ruin... I'm not going to ruin the ending since you haven't seen it, RPA, but it... uh, it's a great, uh, okay. <laughs> it won't ever win an Oscar, but it's no. a great horror. But you know oh, what though? There goes your, your uh, camera again. Oh. Poor thing. Yeah. So, um, but the thing is, so like even not winning an Oscar, like the acting was not horrible in it. No, not at all. Like, I didn't think. Um, and I had, um, like I, like I never like had any ill feelings towards it at all. Like it, it just, 
like it was what it was and it's like your typical you know shit hits the fan uh outbreak movie but but the acting was good and the uh rada is it rada or rada oh, um, mitchell yeah rada mitchell yeah yeah like yeah, she, she hasn't she's in hasn't um what she, yeah. silent hill and and like i i don't mind her i've got to admit i've never seen evolution that's the movie with David Duchovny in it. I think it was a a spoof yeah. of Alien slash Outbreak films, and I should we should take Becky doesn't love comedies, so no, that's I, part of the problem. I don't but, like comedies yeah. at all. Um, it it came out just before, just after Mars Attacks as well, and I was so disappointed with Mars Attacks that I ended up not watching Evolution. That was part of it, you know. But I I'll add it to my list. I do have um. Six String Samurai on my list. I did manage to uh, possibly procure a copy to watch, and I'm going to subject you to that at some point. Oh, boy. I did watch two really old uh, Shit Hits the Fan prepper films while you were gone. Uh, that's about all I found time to watch. But, yeah, yeah, Mars Attacks was bad. horrible. It and I didn't awful. realize that was a, um, uh, oh, you know, um, shit, what's his name? That did Beetlejuice and... Oh, uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton. It's a Tim Burton film, yeah. Um, and Renegade says evolution is stupid funny. Yeah, I've heard. Oh, Silent Hill. Fuck, Silent Hill's awesome. I like yeah. Silent Hill. Just the yeah, the first, the one. first one, and the yeah. the visuals in Silent Hill and in the sound. Yeah, well, that that crazy um, the big guy or the, the big nurse? guy with the <sighs> yeah, like j- just the effects in the Silent Hill was it was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved it. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen The Crazies, it's a great survival film where basically a dad has to look after his family. You know, don't want to, I'm not going to spoil the ending. It's got a insane ending, which makes the movie, but it's a hard R and it is, here's a couple of, I had some little pieces of uh, trivia here, but it is a um, remake of a George A. Romero film from 73. So yeah, a couple I knew of it years, was a remake, yeah. Now, here's what's really cool. Now, did I write it down? It opens. Here it is. So, um, well, you know what? I don't want to ruin this. But it opens with a um, Johnny Cash song. Yeah, no, don't ruin it for somebody who hasn't seen it. No, I won't. So, but the film opens with a Johnny Cash film. Uh, What, the year before that, the remake of Dawn of the Dead comes out. And it also opens with a Johnny Cash film. So, two remakes of George Romero films both open (laughs) with a Johnny Cash film. So, I thought that was pretty cool. Johnny Cash song. Oh, you no. keep saying film <laughs> it's like, song. Yeah. It's not a director. Honey. I was trying to be careful not to ruin it because in this sentence I had written down, it has the ending and I didn't want to okay. ruin it for you. Had a critic score of 71, but an audience score of 56, but I loved it on Rotten Tomatoes. Like it was, yeah, I thought it was, it was a good no, I, Honestly, if I, if I'm scrolling through like Netflix or whatever, and I seen it mm-hmm. and I see it on there and I'm bored, I, I always turn it on. I know. You have a yeah. list of probably about 20 films that you wouldn't scroll by, don't you? No. Oh, yeah. And, and that's okay. Because they're just films I enjoy. And and I and I don't necessarily watch them. It's just background noise. <laughs> yeah. You know what, RPA? On our, on our film nights, you can talk about anything you want. We'll go down <laughs> tangents. People, if people don't realize that we're going to go down tangents on film nights by now, it's okay. But the Red Dawn remake was absolutely dog trash. You, and the, the original Red Dawn... The effects in it were awful. The but you know what? That movie is a classic. Oh, I don't even so care. Like good. Patrick Swayze, Jennifer Grey, like Charlie Sheen. It's an incredible movie. And the remake, I the remake, it, it kind of I had the feeling that they were making fun of it. It and okay. it and it kind and it was really disappointing. It was two things. It yeah. maybe making fun of it, but I think. You know how we always say go woke and go broke. I don't think that was necessarily what it was, but what I think they were so damn afraid of offending anybody that they made the movie blah. You know, yeah. it was a PG 13 that didn't, I mean, it had bad guys, but they didn't really want to say that it was North Korea or China. It, I think it was Russia. I don't. And the original one. The, ri- the original was Russia and Cuba. Yeah. Right. So, which was great. And it made sense because it was at the height of the Cold War. And it is, you know, and yeah, you're right. Um, Renegade says it made him sad because Chris Hemsworth is a decent actor, but some movies don't need to be modernized. No. Right. And like I said, like the original Red Dawn. Yeah. Like the effects were like ridiculous, but, but it was a, it was a great movie. Oh yeah. Like, and, oh, I think we got our cameras backwards. We're looking the other way again. And um, <laughs> no, and, and I love, and I, I remember watching it when I was younger. I right. love that movie. 
Look at and, um, look at say Total Recall or RoboCop, two incredible hard R films that didn't need to be modernized and didn't need a PG thirteen remaking, right? So, well, in Total Recall, did you say Total? Yeah, Recall? Total Recall. Yeah, sorry. Was, oh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yozik says I love educating my kids with original movies like that, and they love the original. It, yeah. You know what's cool about this? This is what I like is we have, um, whoops, that's the wrong one. We, um, I've been showing the girls King of the Hill over again, which is great. But some of the <laughs> I other, don't like I, I know you one. don't. That's why we don't watch it with you. <laughs> yeah. But I think my favorite part of uh, sharing pop culture from the past is also explaining to the kids why they talk the way they did, why the world was the way it was, and kind of give them a bit of the mindset of where we were. Because it's only been 20 or 30 years, but it's completely, it's, it's like the seventies to us or the sixties to us. Right. So, well, it's like the other day. Um, that's what it, there it is. Yeah. So, um, Nat says they had to delay the release because they switched from China to North Korea as the enemy and had to fix everything in the footage. So, yeah, yeah because Garen, I mean, China plays a big part <laughs> in the, <laughs> sorry, we got a cat outside today. I never bothers me when I'm in here, but when Becky's in here, all of a sudden Maui needs to get behind the closed door. So, um, but yeah, China, China rules the box office. And I want to say that their box office is worth something like 10 to 20% of the worldwide gross at this point. So if and you have to go through an approval board over there in order to get your film approved. So if it has things like witchcraft or anti-China or anything like that, yeah, it sucks. Mm -hmm. So they they do that. And I'm sure that's exactly what happened was they kowtowed to China yeah. and said, sorry, we didn't mean it. We'll back up. But it know? was still an awful movie. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just made it worse, right? Yeah. So plus there was no Patrick Swayze in it or young. Was it Charlie Sheen? Yeah. 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 I get him and Hey, Martinson family and Renegade Butcher said King of the Hill was not 20 years. Oh, it was. <laughs> it was not. I know. I don't, I, I don't want to admit it either. Well, but. like even the other day, um, Charlotte says to me, she goes, she goes, mom, uh, do you, do you know what South Park is? And I'm like, are you for real right now? Jesus. I like, cause they've been watching South Park. Sure. Well, which whatever. Honestly, don't bother me at all. It doesn't you know bother this. me. I, I hate South Park. I yeah, hated I, it when I was younger. Like, but she's talking to me like I'm not supposed to know what it is. Right? right. And I was like, yeah, I know what it is, but I don't like it. Sure. I think it's stupid. I don't think it's funny. And just like King of the Hill, I don't think it's funny. Like I will like the Simpsons, some of the Simpsons, maybe, but um, Family Guy, they think Family Guy is hilarious. And I don't think, find anything funny about Family Guy. But, That's true, Yozik. Yeah, it was pre nineteen ninety nine, so yeah, twenty five years for King of the Hill. But yeah, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a Family Guy fan. Uh, never loved South Park. It, you know, it, it, I should have. It was big when I was in high school, but it never did it for me. No, you know, it just it just didn't. No, I don't know. They think it's hilarious, but I'm yeah. just like because when we were on the trip, they're like they would put it on the TV, and I'm like, oh, you turn that crap off, right? Like. Um, does Idiocracy count as an outbreak film? The outbreak of stupid. <laughs> Not a bad idea. There's a YouTuber I watch that does, um, he does uh, making cocktails and that sort of thing. But he said the other day, he's like, oh, he said, if anybody mentions that they like Idiocracy, he said, that's the end of the conversation with me. I can't stand them. And I'm like, oh, I, apparently you don't appreciate it for the classic that it is. I mean, it, it yeah, it, that's. There you go, guys. That's exactly it. They both said kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, Renegade said, Family Guy's good in small doses, i.e. 60-second clips on TikTok is what you're thinking, Josh, guaranteed. Yep. And Byron says, I can only handle a little of the older South Park episodes. And that, yeah, that's exactly. But, like, even if you're watching them, like, you know, like 20 years ago, you're watching it and you're like, oh, that's hilarious and everything, right? But then, but then you watch it now and you're thinking, that's not even like remotely funny. And it's like, it's just dumb. Uh, Terrence and Philip, the Canadians, you know, and Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo. When you're a 14 year old or 16 year old boy, yeah, it's but, fucking but hilarious. But when you watch it now, but... it's like, it's not even funny. No, nah, I, I, I don't it, know. It doesn't. And yeah, whatever. It's hard to believe it's still going. It's like The Simpsons. Oh, I know. The Simpsons stopped being funny in like season eight or nine, right? So, but yeah. So, how do yeah. you get on so? Oh, anyway, yeah. idiocracy <laughs> all the way down through, right? But yeah. So, what's your next one, sweetheart? Um, uh, I am legend. Oh yes, I didn't put that one in there. 
No, I have I Am Legend because I have a soft spot for that movie. Um, when we first watched it, I remember saying that was like pretty much one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yep. And and love him or hate him, I love Will Smith. Like mm-hmm. he he is what he is. Like he might not be a good guy, but that man can act. Like he's an incredible actor. Letty agrees with you. She yeah. she said very good choice. Yeah, like he he's he's an incredible actor and. I find any of the roles he's in. The only movie that I didn't like of his was the one he did with his son. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. But but I don't even think that was Will. I think that was because the, the son can't act, right? Yeah. But um, but I just find that everything that he's ever been in, I've always loved all his movies. Yeah, especially that, like, that stretch. You know, he yeah. had, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so, hey, we, we got, uh, how am I going to pronounce that? Uh <laughs> G G G Z D R for Ev. Anyway, good to have you over on Twitch. Always love it. So we're gonna go with the alternate ending. And if you don't know this, well, the problem is ahead. okay. When we watched it, it was the original ending. Yes, where Nel- yeah. uh, Neville dies. Yeah. So I I know there's the alternate ending, and I know it was this big setup for I Am Legend two. Do I think they should be making an I Am Legend two now? No. They should have did it 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Um, because, you know, like Will Smith is still in it. Will he be great? Uh, I'm assuming he will be. Um, the other guy in it. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. I can't stand him. I don't like him either. I cannot or, stand Michael Jordan. I just don't think he's a great actor. No, I don't. And I don't like him. And like, I think, like, I don't know if Will Smith is going to have a big part in it. Or is he just going to have a little part in it? Like, if they're going to go the alternate ending where he survived, then I hope he's going to have a huge part in the movie. But he's also aged how many years now? And, like, I assume it's probably going to pick up right where it left off. No, no? Uh, about or, 30 years later. 30 years yeah. Okay. So they're going to at least do so that. So they're going to so, age him at least. Yeah. Okay. Which he's yeah. been doing a lot of lately, older films, right? So Yeah. But that, it's still disappointing. They still should have did it right away. And they're going to do the same shit with World War Z, too. If right. they ever get around to making well, one. I know, but they 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 keep talking, keep talking, keep talking, and then it's going to be too long, and then it's going to be stupid. Right? I here's like, what they need to do: they need to go back and they need to turn World War Z into a three season HBO marquee series, rated R, rated a hard R, like hard R, yeah, yeah. and just where they take every story and turn it into a standalone episode. I think it's the only way they could do it because I love the book World War Z. And it, the movie was nothing to do with the book, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I heard a great quote on a, a podcast I was listening to the other day. Uh, Max Brooks, that's the son of, is it Mel Brooks? I might have that. But anyway, the, the, um, the writer of World War Z said that when the film company bought the rights to the film, <laughs> they bought a name only. He's like, they bought a great name for a movie. That's all they bought because they didn't make his book into a film. And I'm like, <laughs> like. Uh, what do we look at? Which one? Uh, Chris Rock one. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there. Okay, I, d- I don't like Jada Smith yeah. at all. I can't stand her. I think the way she treated Will, what, like she was an asshole. Mm-hmm. And what oh, she, she's awful. She, yes. is an, she is an awful human being. Um, What uh, what he slapped Chris for, whatever. She deserved it. I don't care. I hate Chris Rock. I know Honestly, you if yeah, I was I if I was Will whether or not he said that like even when i watch chris rock's movie i want to slap him right so honestly and now chris is totally monetizing this like this stupid netflix oh you know what like that. i'm sorry but, but i would too <laughs> if well, somebody know, come but, up on stage but, and but i'm the like problem yeah. is, though, chris rock was a has-been right right so i don't think he's funny he, he's not funny he's loud he's arrogant he's, he's adam he's, sandler sidekick he's obnoxious and, yeah. and okay he was making fun of jada because she has uh, alopecia which is not right it's not right. It's a metal con- condition and it is like, it, it's an autoimmune disease and it does hurt. It, it like, it does affect mental health on people. Um, should he have been making fun of her? Probably not. Do they make fun of people at these shows? Absolutely. Sure they do. But Look at Ricky Gervais, the year he, he, he know, hosted the gold. But, but the problem is so like, but people like Chris Rock, why do you have to make fun of people to be funny? Like, why can't you just be funny? Right? Like, I, like, honestly, like, Jada Smith, I could care less about. But, like, that's why I don't like comedians. 
Right. Right. Because like, why do you have to make fun of people all the time? Why can't you, why can't you have original material and just be funny? And like, I'll beg, I'll differ with you. I understand because you know, I love humor and I think it's a really good way to, to deal with issues that aren't normally dealt with, you know? And, and if you're a multimillion dollar actor sitting in the stage or sitting in the stands at the Oscars, I think you're fair game. I mean, now this isn't, it wasn't a roast, but you know, I mean, at the roast for Pete Davidson, they made fun of his dad who died in nine 11. So you know what I mean? Like that. Sure. And (laughs) uh, renegade says Chris rock. (laughs) Yeah. He does have little man syndrome. Mm. Yeah. And it's true. I don't, I've never liked Chris rock. Okay. But you Dave Chappelle, I love, but but. you can make fun of people. Well, okay. You can make fun of multimillion dollar actors without making fun of a health condition that they can't help. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> that's a great, like, oh yeah. that. Oh, is and the, I can't yeah. stand Amber no. Heard either, but like, Ooh. but like you can make, but you can, like, he could have made fun of all her shitty movies, mm-hmm. right? Because she can't act for shit. He could have made fun the way that uh, she told Will Smith that she got an entanglement on the red table. Like he could have made fun of anything, but like, you can't, it's just not funny making fun of somebody because of a health reason that they can't control. Yeah. Right. And, and honestly, whether or not he was make, but anyway, it wasn't funny. No, it wasn't funny. And and honestly, you know, Will overreacted, but they didn't like he was he probably crossed a line. He did, but he was probably drinking. Sure, right. And honestly, Chris Rock needs a good punch in the face. I don't. But I don't know. No matter what else anybody thinks, nobody will ever forget the moment that Will Smith stepped on stage and slapped oh, Chris I Rock. I just in wish he would have hit so. him harder. Not I to couldn't believe I was ass. I was laying in bed and it was coming up on Twitter and they're like. There was all these memes about Will Smith. I'm like, what the hell happened, honey? <laughs> I wish he would have hit him harder and knocked him on his ass. That would have been like, is it like if you're gonna get thrown out of the Oscars, at least make it worth your while, right? You know what like, would be friggin' awesome like, if like five years down the road it comes out that it was all staged. I don't um, think it's gonna happen, but it would be cool if it did. So yeah, no, he was too pissed. Oh yeah, yeah. So what was your film we were just talking about? Uh, um, I am Legend. <laughs> I am Legend. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, we 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 made it there. You know, so. Um, Letty Lou says, body language guy says, Jada, Amber, and Meghan Markle are a trifecta of narcissists. I have no doubt about that at all, Letty. Mm-hmm. And uh, Martinson says, place yourself in their shoes. Ashley would have smashed Chris Rock herself. Or, uh, I would I would deal with the staff. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I make fun of people all the time but with class into their face. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can make fun of people and have tact and be classy about it. Yeah. But you don't have to like. There are lines you know, in. There are yeah. lines, you know, like that'd be like making fun of somebody because, like, um, I don't know, like because they have brain cancer. You know, what I mean, like that's not funny, right? Like, and and so this is what I do, and I but and again, yes, Twitch. Um, I'm going to call you Forev over on Twitch because I'm not sure what else to call you. <laughs> so, um, yes, they Tracy Morgan after his Walmart truck accident, the comedians lined up to make a joke about the incident with their own spin, and. You know what? If I was in a car accident, I'd want people to make fun of me too. But that's who I am, you know. Yeah. And and I'll bet you, Jeremy Renner wants people to make fun of him for getting run over by a damn snowplow. Okay, but that but those are accidents, right? That's not a medical condition that could possibly that you're that you're fighting with, that you're dealing with, that your mental health is dealing oh, with. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Like because alopecia is really hard for women. I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah like I and know. and it is, and it can take a lot of toll on your mental health. Right. So and it is an autoimmune and there's other symptoms with it. Women aren't as lucky as men where we lose our hair up here, but it just comes out everywhere else. So, yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, but some, no, I so. have no sympathy for Jada, though. No, none whatsoever. But I Am Legend is a great film. It is a great film. Uh, and I've told the story before, but uh, you did really well that time. You Many years ago, I really hope the statute of limitations is over, but you found a DVD quality copy on Oscar rip. Yeah, it was an uh, like, yeah, yeah, an Oscar cam screener. Um, before it was even in theaters. So yep. it was great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. And Renegade, you're right. If they openly make fun of their own illness, then it's different. Exactly. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I agree for sure. All right. My next one, Children of Men. Oh, oh I had that one fuck, too. I love it. Okay. That is one of the best films ever made, I think. And it was a bomb in the box office. Which is, I don't understand because Clive Owen is... Like, he's not yes. the greatest actor, though, right? No. But... I'm just going to go back right quick, because Forev over on Twitch is absolutely right. I Am Legend 
gave us the famous Batman v Superman poster yeah. long before it was ever thought of. That and was it, a great poster. I got so excited. I know we seen that because yeah. remember it wasn't it in the trailer or something or in a still or something early I on. I can't or... remember. It. Yeah, yeah. He's well. He's walking. Yeah, and it's in back behind him. But um, no, I remember seeing that. I was so excited. Oh, yeah. okay, that's cool. Yeah, we will. I like Key and Peele in in their own way, and it's hard to believe that. You know, Jordan Peele is now making interesting horror films, yeah. including well, uh, including an all time classic in Get Out. But the yeah, rest, but that's about it. The other ones you can take them or leave them. So, Children of Men takes place in London, twenty twenty seven. If you haven't seen that film, leave the live stream right now and go watch it. It's yeah. probably the best film we'll talk about all night. It it is so perfect. I think it is probably one of the most realistic portrayals of societal collapse. Yep, but it all it but they only show England. It was only the UK. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, it, but it's it, it's the whole world, right? It's the whole world. Well, they don't mention, like, they kind of offbeat, I think the, the nurse mentions Australia. Sure. But they they don't actually say anything, mention any other countries. But I am assu- you assume that it's the whole country. I mean. Or, like, the whole world. If, if the women went infertile in England, I'm pretty sure yeah. they probably would. I know, but yeah. they just don't. Right. Uh, maybe the rest of the world's gone. Maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh but it's, oh, in the cast in that film, oh, my God. You got Michael Caine, Julia Moore, um, Clive Owen, and Chiwetel Ejiofor or whatever, you know, uh, from Ejiofor. 12 years. Ejiofor. Yeah, 12 years. Uh, yeah. I feel so bad. I don't intentionally mispronounce these people's but names. Michael, but I, Michael Caine is awesome. Oh, I love Michael Caine. Michael Caine. I love him. He plays yeah. the, he's, oh, it's. He's like the dope. <laughs> okay. The two best characters in my mind that Michael Caine's ever played. Is this? He's a, a former artist who just lives in the woods and grows his own dope and smokes, and smokes it. it. Yeah. And Harry Brown, you remember Harry Brown? Yeah. Oh my God! If you guys haven't seen that film, he plays a retired assassin who is in his like seventies or eighties at the time who has to clean up. It's yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Michael <laughs> King, pull my finger. He says, yeah. it, "If you ever want to see some great films or great videos, there's Gosh, a whole bunch of the movie cover." Oh, looks oh like. okay, yeah, I'll bring it up for you. Yeah. So, um. There is some old uh, YouTube uh, videos from probably the 80s, and it's called Michael Caine on acting. Mm -hmm. And it's him with his very thick act. He has such a great accent, but it's, oh, yeah. Here, I'll bring this up. Children Um, of Men. He, has he? Did he pass? No, or no, he, he's no. ninety-two. Oh, okay. uh, he was yeah. he was at um, at the beach with his wife the other day. He oh, was okay. in her seventies. It was really sweet. He had these people who were helping him get into the pool or whatever. And yeah, uh, that's not the right pose. Hang on, guys. I'll bring it up here for you yeah. so you can see it. Um, but it is just oh, such a good film. Let's see if we can find any. Um, I think it's just a picture of Clive Owen. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know, that, like the poster on Netflix or whatever. Yeah. So that's the picture they're showing there. That's not the poster that was around a lot. But no. if you look for kind of Clive Owen, I wish I could find a better. Yeah. But uh, let, let's do this here. Um, Children of Men poster. There. We'll bring it up. There it yeah, is. That's, it's, the, it's this one here. Yeah. Well, kind of. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That, that gives you an idea of what it looks like anyway there, guys. Um. Yeah, that's it. And it was so good. And there is a, about a, what, a five or 10 minute film where, or um, mm-hmm. shot that is, um, it's technically uncut. They, they put it together digitally, but you can't tell. Basically where you follow kind of a point of view shot of Clive Owen going into a, I still get chills thinking of that, mm-hmm. when, going in like live fire into um, an abandoned apartment building. Nobody knows that there's a baby alive because yeah. the whole world's infertile. And he walks out with a baby crying and everybody just stops. It goes silent, almost like some kind of religious thing, right? Yeah. And oh my God, this movie, it has everything. It, oh, it is a, a well fleshed out world. It is, um, it predicts the future. You know, it, it's one of those that feels like it really could have happened. Yeah. Uh, especially, I hate to say it, but in, in say a post Donald Trump world, you know, a oh, little yeah. bit. Yeah. And, uh. Renegade says, I know it's more chemical versus contagion, but Serenity fits the theme. Ah, we've never watched those Josh Whedon, the Firefly and Serenity, but yeah. Do yourself a favor, Letty Lou. This is one worth watching. Uh, I've probably seen it 10 or 15 times. Oh, yeah, me too. Even, and Clive Owen and uh, uh, Julianne Moore have such chemistry in that because they play play a pair of um, like ex-husband and wife who hate each other, but loved each other so deeply. Yeah. And when they do that stupid ping pong ball thing where they're spitting it back and then 
Well, oh, yeah, don't ruin yeah, it. Yeah, I won't. I already yeah, ruined it enough, so I won't. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it all for you, Letty, but it's so good. And Michael Caine is just perfect. The soundtrack is fucking amazing. The cinematography, right down to when they're doing that full unbroken shot and it blows up and there's blood or dirt on the camera lens yep. and they leave it there and it's like oh my god i love it so i know such a film geek when it comes i just whatever right but yeah <laughs> uh, she said uh, oh hey chris dixon good to have you i just uh, and becky's husband <laughs> <laughs> asshole that's right i just polished off a, a glass of the honey bourbon i still have a little bit left so letty says we should do a live stream of serenity with the group we could do a workshop watch party I have my suspicions that there probably won't be any watch parties this summer. It'll probably be a oh, winter no, thing. Oh, no, we're, we're so busy. Mm -hmm. But we'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. What else do we have? Uh, yeah, so it has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it was a it it was a, it was a bomb. So, um, But yeah, we, we, we've done two so far movie nights. I've I figured out the kinks so that it works really well now. I know what I was doing wrong. So we will do another one. I don't we'll get it done this summer, but we'll see. Maybe we'll sneak one in at some point, right? So... <laughs> um, okay, so what's your next one, Darlin? Uh Outbreak. Outbreak. Oh, yes. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, so Outbreak is on this list. So. It is on this list. It's um, the one with Rene Russo and what's his name? Um, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Rain, that, Rain Man. Yeah, it's, uh, I'd say it's another guilty pleasure. I think I've watched it. I don't know. I think I, think I used to own the DVD to it. And, um. It's not a, um, I wouldn't call it a classic. Oh, no, no, the acting is horrible in it. But, like, the whole premise behind it. And, and like, it's a really good movie. You're watching it and everything. And then it, it kind of, the only part that bothered me about it is, like, you're watching it and you're like, oh, man, this this is really good. And, like, how they, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, they trace it back and everything like that. Yes. And then it. Then it's um, Chris Dixon, Rene Russo. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. But then, but then you get to the point where you're like, um, uh, what do you like? It's just too easy of a fix. It is, and it, you know, like it, it, it is mid '90s to a T as well. Yeah, like right? it's too easy of a fix. Oh, okay, now you okay? You know it was the monkey, and now all of a sudden you know where this monkey is. You're gonna like, and what what are those? Monkeys? They're like what two pound monkeys, yeah. right? <laughs> like so. But it checks all the boxes. Yeah, you know? I there's know. there's a government conspiracy. There's a mm -hmm. cute little animal. There's a girl who's in danger who can talk to the animal. Yeah, there. You know it. Um. You know. It, it, but it. I'm not saying it's a bad film, but it it's not a classic. Oh, right? it's so, not a classic. Yeah. But I I didn't mind. Like it was okay. But then it kind of gets too predictable. Yeah. Right. But um. No, but I I. And there was a young Cuba Gooding Jr. in this too, wasn't there? There was, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. um yeah, it it was a good film. I yeah. you know, it was what it was. It was oh that maybe was just at the yeah, I don't remember Sean Connery. Donald Sutherland. He Donald, was the other yeah, one he it. plays Patrick the, and Dempsey. Kevin Spacey was in it. Right, man. Yeah, yeah, there was a really good cast in that. It film. was a good cast. It was your typical nineties. Yeah, cast. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Spacey before he did whatever Kevin Spacey does. <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and I love Morgan Freeman. I yeah, listen to I, that man talk all the time. Yes, yeah. uh, Haas said, remind me of COVID pandemic. Absolutely. I have another one, the next one on my list, that'll probably remind you even a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I bet you have that one on your list too. I you? probably yeah. do, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see your last one. I shouldn't have looked, but that's a good <gasps> Don't one. Don't look at my movies. I'm a dick. I know I looked at your list, so. Cheater. But it's a, look, oh no, that's a Shawshank. But yeah, it, yeah, it was a good film. Simple mm -hmm. as that. It, uh, it just, yeah, it's a great I think we watched it during COVID, didn't we? Oh yeah, because yeah. they put it on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it was it was big. you know it, you know because the the pan like because what was going on wasn't making people scared enough, so right. they had to release a whole bunch of pandemic <laughs> movies, right? Just to put people with anxiety over the edge, because like why not? Right? But yeah, but the the crazy thing is though is that those movies are are there because of an algorithm so people are watching them so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy well no too, netflix right? nate made a whole category oh called sure they Outbreak did movies. <laughs> yeah like yeah that makes sense yeah so like you know like so i said like people weren't anxious enough why not make it worse right i wanted to see the last film renee russo made oh she was in uh thor oh okay uh end game, yeah okay well she's been still doing yeah that was she's, a good film the intern she's with, uh, um Robert thor's Jean. mother remember Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, she's done a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, she had a bit. I guess Friga. She, and, I yeah, and she was big in Nightcrawler. She was mm -hmm. 
the head of the um, the news place there that he was selling the video or the movies to. So yeah, yeah, no, and she was an Endgame Velvet Bud Buzzsaw. I never, I remember hearing about that. Oh, also him. Yeah, yeah, uh, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I do too. Jake Gyllenhaal is a good actor. Simple as that. All right, so my next one is just hang on. Let's get this off here for now. Contagion. And this was the film the that everybody too. went crazy for over COVID. We went back and rewatched it probably three or four months in when we were hanging out at home still, right? And uh, it's yeah. not going to win any Oscars either. No. no. Oh, <laughs> Renegade Butcher says, was The Birds an outbreak movie? Well, that's a good question. It never really, I don't believe it explains why The Birds went crazy. But I'll allow it. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I love that film. Honestly, some night we'll have to do... I actually had an Alfred Hitchcock film on my um, list I put together earlier today for the conspiracy films, North by Northwest, if you've ever seen that. But yeah, I'd love to do an Alfred Hitchcock episode. I know, uh, you're, not, I know you're not a big Hitchcock fan, but you would, you would still hang out with me, right? Yeah, so, I probably yeah. would hang out with you. But... Yeah. Uh, what do we got? Contagion. I had to make the list. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Avian flu. So um, I went back, did a little research on this episode. It was a cross between avian flu and swine flu. That's what made it so deadly. For contagion? In, in contagion, okay. yes. So um, from reading about the film, apparently it is the most scientifically sound of all the outbreak films that are out there. Uh, to the point where it's almost a little bit scary for some people like that. And uh, feeding on rust-infected grain. Oh, <laughs> I think the most annoying character in that movie was Jude Law. Oh, uh, what, what, he was like the reporter. Oh, yes. Yeah. He was so annoying well, in that. It was partly because you didn't know where he stood, right? Well, no, but they had him done up funny. Mm. Like, uh, like. He was a bit like a podcaster, wasn't he? <laughs> no, no, but like they, yeah. I don't know. They, they just had his teeth done up funny and they had him like really goofy looking and stuff like that. I don't know. I, he was really annoying in that one. Um, yeah, and yeah, I remember now that you mentioned it, it was... Yeah, uh, no, it, it was yeah. the Ebola one. Was Outbreak. Was yeah. Outbreak, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so it was directed by Steven Soderbergh. If you've ever watched his films, you either like him or you hate him. He did one a few years ago, filmed entirely on an iPhone, which was pretty good. It mm -hmm. had uh, the girl from The Queen, uh, Claire Claire Foy or whatever in it. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was. I liked it. She... She got, remember they, they put her in a mental institution and then she couldn't get out or she checked herself in and couldn't check herself out or something. And then it was like one of those films where you didn't know what was real and what wasn't. But uh, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'll Chris, probably have to watch it again. Chris Dixon's right about well-researched, but the acting was mediocre. Um, yeah. And it, what's crazy about it is you had Matt Damon, Kate Winslet, Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, Marion Cotard, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, and Brian Cranston all in this film. And it still felt dull. Well, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, they kill her off in like the first, first 10 minutes. Yeah. Which and then I, they kill Kate, Kate Winslet off halfway through the movie. Right. And then, and Jude Law's character was annoying. Yep. So it's like, yeah, it was kind of, I don't know. It was like, it was, no, it was a good movie. It was just that. Yeah. Right. Like a little bit like Hotel California, Chris. He says, I feel like that at the shop some days, check yourself in and can never leave. <laughs> So maybe the same monkeys for Mace Ventura and friends. Oh dear. Yeah. Or maybe they did a little monkey business and yeah, not good. So, but it, it's a, a beautiful film. You know, it's, it's bleak and dark the way it looks, but it, uh, I don't know. It, it's not a happy film. Which no, I'll it's, say. It's, well, it's not meant to be right. No. But. Um, but it, what is it? So there's a, let's see here. It says, this was kind of interesting. In the movie, the CDC chooses those born on March 10th to be the first to receive the vaccine. March 10th, 1995 was the original U.S. release date of the film Outbreak. So it was a cute little um, nod. And this was a film that was very much divisive. Critics loved it, 85%. Audience was more like, meh, yeah. 63%. And that's, I would say I'm in a meh kind of, you know. Meh, yeah. Yeah, yeah see, you even meh. met it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was... Like, it was okay. Um, like, I've watched it a couple times. But I actually was going to put Planet, Planet Terror on my list. Oh, that's been a long time since we watched that. Yeah. We only watched it once. Oh, um, I've watched it a couple okay. times. Okay. Yeah. But when we were... Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, speaking of getting in the weeds, here, let's see if you guys remember this one. Just hang on. Uh, I, I have a soft 
soft spot for this film. Oh, I've watched. I just watched it it's a couple weeks plant. ago. You know, I can't do a Mark Wahlberg impersonation, but yeah, he was just. No, yeah. he's got the Boston accent. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah I can't. Yeah, <laughs> but it, I don't know. It was. It's fun. It feels like a a throwback to the fifties and sixties monster films. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was. It was okay. It was yeah. critically panned across the board when it came out, but it was the first R-rated film M Night Shyamalan did. And I don't think people got it at the time. Marky Mark and the Plants, yes. Yeah. And uh, Renegade says 28 Days Later. Didn't put that in my list because we no, did we've, as, yeah. we've, we've, we've done that one a couple times. Yeah. And that honestly is on my top 100 films of all time list. So, and that's it, Renegade. It's it's like a lot of other films. It's, well, it's a guilty pleasure. Sure it is. Yeah. yeah. It's shitty. And I love Mark Wahlberg. Oh, I, I like too. everything he, yeah. he because does. He, he, and he can, he can serious act. But God damn, doesn't he always look like he's either trying to hold in a fart or hold in a laugh? He's just so well, cause funny. Because he, he does do comedies. Sure. I think the only movies I can't stand him in are the Transformer movies. And that's yeah. because I don't like the Transformer movies. But Mark Wahlberg, I, I like anything he does. I like the first Transformers film. Well, the first one. Yeah, yeah, but that was it. Remember how awesome that was in theaters when we were there and we, we had the kids with us and they did that first scene where they go around the circle as all the, the Autobots mm-hmm. change. You're like, oh. Mm-hmm. But then it just got so bad after that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, Contagion, it's on the list. Yeah. I you can't make a list about contagious uh, things and not put it on the list, right? So, uh, oh, I have two more yet on my list, and you've I've got, got one more. One more. Do you want me to go one more on my list first? Uh, yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, the next one is the invasion. With Ugh. My... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know what? Another one I didn't put on the list was Blindness with uh, Julianne Moore. Remember that was a good film. I, I, I almost thought about putting that in there because, um, it, yeah, no, we watched it together. Did it's we? that one, the movie that has that whole white palette. The whole, the whole movie's almost white. Oh, and prob- I can't. She's, yeah, yeah. Hey, Drev, there's Rev. <laughs> Always good to have him on here. Renegade says uh, he might be holding in a laugh because he's sneaking silent farts and everyone else has to try to act. Probably. That would be me. Um, yeah, if anybody saw the picture of uh, Chris Dixon, his boys, and me and my boy, and we're all laughing, it's because I just farted before we took the picture, so... It's normal. Hey, gunfighter concealment. Good to have you. 12 monkeys. Yes. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Poor dad. <laughs> so you missed the first few minutes um, for Ev. So this is not the conspiracy film list. If um, if the the old description got over to Twitch, I'm, I apologize. We started putting the episode together and it just, we weren't feeling it. Well, it, and I was really busy today. And then he told me it was conspiracy films and I only know one. Yeah. And that's the conspiracy theory. So I don't, I'm not a huge conspiracy and I don't like the X-Files or anything. Like I've never watched any of those. So we will do a list of them, but we'll include them. Maybe we'll do two lists in one night sometime okay. because I do have a few good picks for conspiracy films or maybe, hell, maybe we could touch on them at the end. We'll see. But yeah, we, we just couldn't put together a quality enough list to bring to you. So we're like, I know what we can talk about shit that kills people. So let's do <laughs> contagious films. So, <laughs> so we put together a list for that, but um, Enemy of the State, yes, that that's a good one. Yeah, uh, been, I, I think last time I watched that was on VHS. I don't know if I've ever seen it since. It's one of those films that come out and it kind of got lost, eh? Yeah, I don't, I, just, I don't think I've watched the whole movie. And uh, <laughs> do a list of conspiracy films that turned out to be true later on. Uh, JFK, for instance, yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> oh, just, just kidding, just kidding. Anyway, uh, twenty eight days later, twenty eight. So okay. Um, it's, it could easily be, it would be 28 days later, could have been on our list. We had it on two previous lists, so we left it off tonight. Yeah. But if you ask me what is my, one of my favorite horror films of all time, yeah, it's 28 days later. So I love it. It's great. Um, so Invasion, Nicole Kidman, Daniel Craig, a great pair. They they work well together. I can't stand Nicole Kidman. I know. I know yeah. you can't. I <laughs> I had the biggest crush on her in the world in high school, so I couldn't help it. But I always liked her films, too. You know, it was... Um, I liked her 90s films. Sure. But... but this was good for her because... And I think it was written for, not really, but mm-hmm. because she wasn't allowed to show emotion in this film. Yeah. And that's why it worked, right? Uh, yes, Renegade, I did have that on there as I've well. I've only seen the first Matrix. Yeah. Well, you don't need <laughs> to see any of the other ones. The second and third were hot dog shit. They were awful. Especially the third one. But anyway, yeah. I love... The first Matrix is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, and honestly, and I will admit, I never watched the entire thing. That's okay. You, yeah. you, like, I'll get you to watch. Like, it. I love Keanu Reeves. Absolutely love him. 
he like his John Wick movies, he's incredible. Oh yeah, he is. Um the acting in the Matrix, I just couldn't get it. His no. acting, yeah. Was like, uh, I, I, I know kung fu. Right. I, I just couldn't do it. But it was but like you watch him now, and you're like, holy, like he's incredible. Yeah. But in the '90s, I, I just, I was not a fan of his at all. And he's, just, he, he's found his niche now. You know what I mean? Like he, yeah. revenge porn. You know, he, he is, he's awesome in it, and he doesn't have to act a ton in John Wick. No. He just needs to show up kick ass, swing some nunchucks, shoot people in the head, and Chris Dixon has to mention Carrie Ann Moss as well. So. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm not going to say, if I can't say anything nice, I'm not going to say anything I, nice. I understand. <laughs> I, I will say that I did agree with him in 1999 as an 18-year-old dude. Even in 1999? Okay, I'm going to say it. It's fine. Carrie Ann Moss <laughs> I love looks you. like a man trying to be a woman. Fair enough, yeah. And that's the vibe I get from mm -hmm. from her and even and she looks even worse now well and, and she and did. she can't act for shit either. no i know but it, so. they didn't need to act in that film it was just so fucking awesome but you know who one. she reminds me of who's that baby um the one that played xena warrior princess oh yeah well you know <laughs> what's her name <laughs> um yeah oh shit she was in um i can't think of her name oh my god spartacus later on uh lucy yeah. Lu lucy lawless lucy lawless yes yeah. she's same a, type of thing she's aged very well but you know, they still have that persona where it's like <laughs> Renegade said she was a pretty man back then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's um, fair. I get it. I understand. Yeah. I was, yeah. uh, I just thought the movie was so fucking cool. I couldn't help it. That's all. So yeah. Lucy, but it wasn't cool. Chris Dixon's <laughs> right in here with all the ladies names tonight. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. But yeah, Lucy Lawless. Yeah. Um, you know what? <sighs> she probably would have. I mean, you imagine Angelina Jolie, the Angelina Jolie that had made, uh, Gone in 60 Seconds, and uh, what was the one where she was the assassin? Salt was good, but not Salt. Uh, wanted. She wanted. She was so good and Wanted. Hey, there's Amy Bishop. Good to have you. <laughs> so, fun story, guys. I'm going down the stairs the other day. I had, I had to go out of town. So, in case you ever wonder, don't ever buy terracotta pots okay, well, from no, Walmart. Uh, okay, well, tell no, them? tell them who Amy is. Yeah, yeah, Amy's my, my sister-in-law. She's Beck, my sister. Yeah, yeah. Her, and, her and Becky are co-owners of the daycare. So, if you ever order terracotta pots from Walmart, this is how they pack them. They open the box and they throw each one in individually as hard as they can. They put the box in a paint shaker. They put tape around it and send it to you. So, when it shows up, it sounds like a jigsaw puzzle made out of terracotta pieces. So, absolute junk. So I go to town the other day, Becky's like, could you buy me 24 more terracotta pots? Just little ones. And I'm like, sure, honey, I'll bring them back to replace the ones that broke. I'm coming down the stairs. I have 24 <laughs> terracotta pots stacked up like this under my chin. And Amy jumps out and scares the living shit out of me. <laughs> something I never would do to her. <laughs> and I almost dropped every one of them. I hope, I wish I had, I should have threw them on the ground just to spider. <laughs> simple as that but <laughs> she, she's hiding behind the door she's like ah and you're like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> one of the very few yeah yeah oh I, I liked hackers hackers was fun i didn't know who angelina jolie was when hackers came out that's what's funny about it i um it had uh uh scooby-doo guy in it matthew lillard or whatever okay yeah it was a good film i enjoyed it but so yeah, the invasion back to the invasion it was yes. it's an okay film um it is the fourth film uh well you had the original invasion of the body snatchers from 56 then you had my favorite uh, <laughs> she's <laughing. laughs> from 78 with donald sutherland if you've ever seen that if you haven't do yourself a favor that's the best one of the, the bunch. one with donald sutherland is the best there's one. that meme where he has the face and he's like uh, yeah that's the pointing. final yeah <laughs> final shot of the film and it yeah it's 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 awesome yeah donald sutherland's perfect it has that there's something about 70s horror films that just fill you full of dread. Well, and it has that grainy yeah. video to yep. it. And, it, yeah. it. It's like uh, Last Host on the Left. Um, oh, shoot. The other, all those revenge films, you yeah. know, they they all had um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. They all had that gritty, it almost like you, you had to wipe the sweat off the celluloid of the yeah. individual <laughs> film cells just to watch it, you know? Yeah, Donald, he's so good. Oh my god. Yeah, I like Donald. Yeah, he is. And he was he was born in uh Canada. Yeah, uh, he's Canadian. Yeah, technically, or he doesn't really, you know. Well, but he, yeah. No, he still says he's from Canada. Does he? Yeah. Okay. He's old now. Like mm -hmm. must be pushing 90, isn't he? I'm not sure. I don't I 
Well, he was in the Hunger Game movies, but yep. I don't know if he's done anything after that or not. Uh, yeah, he's he's still acting, I know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he is good when he's so bad. He yeah, he is because I mean he even looked old ish in 1978 when he did oh yeah yeah so he is let's see let's bring him up here guys but yeah if you haven't seen the original or no sorry not the original the second i think that's the best one the 50s is a little dry and not as scary i don't think but uh did it say where his age was let's see here 1935 so that is 12 years he's 88 so yeah, uh, see, 87 I, right now. I don't think he's done anything since Hunger Games. Maybe not. Let's see right here. Um, Randy. Oh yeah, yeah. He's still. Going. Oh yeah, he played Mr. Harrigan. We haven't watched that yet. Okay. Mr. Harrigan's phone. That is a really good short story from Stephen King. Uh, Charlotte really enjoyed the story, but we haven't watched the movie yet. So, um, cool story. The boy. Actually, no. I don't, it's no, too don't short tell to me even. Because I want to yeah, watch it. It's too so. short to even spoil it, but it involves it an, an old first generation iPhone. Let's put it mm -hmm. that way. So. It's really fun because it feels like Stephen King is writing from old man experience. So okay. it's cool. It's worth watching. So maybe we'll watch it tonight. And that it's looks worth... like the kid off of... Um, yeah, it is. It. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So it's, it's supposed to be good. Well, yeah, we haven't watched it yet, but we will. Um, yeah. And it had a 20 by critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Contain or Invasion did. And a <laughs> 40 surprise. and a forty by fans. So Because it was awful. Universally panned. It yeah, it ended up, from what I understood, I was reading about it, they had to bring in somebody to refilm a third of the film. They rewrote it at the last minute. It ballooned their budget immensely, and it still didn't do very well. So there you go. What's your next one, Sweet Pea? Uh, how many you got left? I got one left, I think. Yep. And I got a couple of yours or no? No, you go ahead. Uh, this is my last one. And um, that's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, Mom and Dad. Yes. So. Talk about it. Mom and Dad, it has, uh, is it Selma Blair? Or, no, it's, no, well, it's Nicolas Cage. It had definitely Nicolas Cage, yeah. <laughs> yeah I I'll bring I it up Nicolas here. Cage. I can't remember. I remember liking the, uh, yeah, um, it is Selma Blair. It is, yeah. Oh, so she must have did this before. Yeah, I don't I don't think she's acting anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, yeah, in Nicolas Cage. And it's about, um, does it ever actually say what caused it? No, I don't think so. Not, Not really. Yeah. Um, it, it's like, I think it's like some sort of uh, sound waves where the parents yeah. are possessed and they have to, and they don't stop because they have to kill their children. Yes. But they won't, but they don't kill other people's children. They only kill their own. Right. Yes. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they talk about it being anti-evolution or something. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Cause like, cause it, like it, it shows at the school. And it's got a whole bunch of security guards and teakers protecting the kids from their parents. Yep. And the parents right. are only after their offspring. Yes. They're not off. They're not. But like, if it's not their offspring, they protect them. Right. And it's, which it's just really weird. Which is yeah. very strange. And then, and of course, then it shows crazy Nicolas Cage. He gets that, his craziness. This was in there. one of the ones that really, um, what do you call it? The, the, the Nicholas, Nicholas uh, Cage Renaissance, you know, like yeah. it, it started a little before this, but this was one of them for sure. Uh, no, but I love this movie. Oh, yeah. like, like that's why it's number one on my list. I the, thought it was great. Right here. You, you read this. This is exactly true. So this is from a critic and it says like a twisted remake of Home Alone on bath salts. Mm -hmm. That, that nails it. Whoever wrote that deserves a raise because and, and then, it was so good. Like. I don't know if I want, I don't want to ruin it. No, but well, like it's hard to ruin. Yeah. But like, but how it, um, so basically, uh, and it goes all the way back the, the chain, like, like the grandparents are killing their kids. Oh, right. They yeah, show up. Like, I forgot yeah, about like, that. So like, but they're only killing their offspring. Yes. So, and it's like, it's, it's very strange. Right. Yeah. And then, it, and like the creepiest part of it when, um, uh, Selma Blair's at the hospital with her sister. Remember? And she gives birth to the baby. Yeah. And she tries killing the baby. Right. But Selma Blair saves it. I forgot about it. Because it's that. not her offspring, right? Yep. But then it shows all the parents. You know, remember the um, you know how they have the nursery with the glass? Yeah. And it shows all the babies in there and it and they're being protected by security guards and nurses and stuff, but it shows all the parents staring at the babies through the glass because because their goal is to kill their offspring. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's really creepy. So and okay, check. I just I'm going to yeah. bring this. So check this out. So look at the shit he made. So there was Joe that was kind of whatever, right? Yeah. But 
14, he was making like Left Behind, Dying in the Light, The Runner, Pay the Ghost, The Trust, Dog Eat Dog, all bullshit like $500,000 films he made, right? And still nothing really good, nothing really good. And then he made Mom and Dad. And then all of a sudden he starts doing these super unhinged, crazy films that he gets well known for. Yeah. He does Mom and Dad. He does Mandy. Uh, was, um, where's the next one? Color Out of Space. Then uh, he gets more and more as he goes along. There's a couple more here. Willie's Wonderland is fucking incredible. I loved it. I watched it on the airplane. Pig, apparently he should have won an Oscar for or should have been. And we've seen the unbearable weight of massive talent. That was, yeah, I, I was actually funny. liked it. Was it was cute. Yeah. I liked that movie. I hear the old way's really good. It's a very violent horror film he's in. And, and now, then, now he's playing Renfield. I play no, Dracula, Dracula in Renfield. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So he's on a bit of a tear. So, yep. Uh, if you want to be a little cheesy, National Treasure and Tomb Raider could both be conspiracy films. You know what? I like National, National Treasure. Is a yeah, that I is a like conspiracy National film Treasure. for sure. And yeah, yeah um, sounds like a mix of Hansel and Gretel and The Signal. Yeah, or yeah. or the um, uh, Cell. Remember, was it Cell or not Cell? Um, oh shoot, the the one from Veronica Mars. What's her name? And also from The Good Place. Oh yeah. Um, it, it's not cell. I want to call it signal. It's that one where the cell phones. Oh, I know. Uh, red... Pulse. Pulse. That's it. Yeah. It's like Pulse as well. Also a good film. Uh, I like that one. It's it's another guilty pleasure. Yeah, it know? is. That early 2000s or something. No, like that, but so. but mom and dad is a really good movie. Yeah. And... Worth watching. Don't watch it with your kids unless they're. Yeah, well, our kids yeah. watched it. Well, sure, they <laughs> so... can. But I mean, I was thinking more of Letty Lou. I was like. Yeah. Oh, no, not with little. You kids, don't want no. little man to watch that yet. No, 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 not <laughs> little ones. Dad, are you going to. Oh, and it's creepy. Like they're in the, the kids are in the basement, and they're like, "No, honey, it's just mom. Let me in." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but they're just trying to kill them. You're like, really? No, yeah. it was yeah. Oh, it's good. It really is. Yeah, it's yep. it's awesome. Uh, so my last one, I do have actually. Let me give you my two. Uh, well, no, I guess only one honorable mention at this point, and that would be the 1994 classic um, miniseries Stephen King's The Stand. Yes. I don't know if they'll ever make a better one. I, no. I wish they would. Uh, but the HBO remake, the hard R HBO remake was. Well, it had Amber Heard in it. Uh, that, that, that explains it. You know, it was awful. But honestly though, like uh, Alexander Skarsgård was really good in it. Yeah. Like he was really good. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. I'm not a big fan. But you know what? But she you know what? She play, wasn't that yeah, bad. She made, she played mother Abigail. She was perfect for mother Abigail. Yeah. And, and Alexander was good as, uh, uh, Randall Flag. Randall Flag. Yep. No, he he was incredible, and uh, but then um, and and a lot of the other actors were actually not that bad, but it just it was slow. The movie. I I don't know how you take, and it's not like they didn't have enough um, uh, source material to play off yeah. of. You've got a book that to listen to is I think forty eight hours long. It's well over a thousand pages. If you can't make an eight episode. HBO miniseries out of it. I mean, if Peter Jackson can turn The Hobbit into three nearly four-hour films, they should have been able to do a, a, a proper The Stand, um, you know. Yeah. But anyway, all that to be said, the 1994 CBS uh, free TV version was way better. Yeah, cheesy is all get out, but you know what? I'll, I'll watch it oh, 20 times before I watch the we go ba- We go back and rewatch that every couple of years. Yeah, no, it's I like so it. It's so good. Um, Stu Redman, uh, the guy from Gary Sinise. Gary Sinise, yeah. They, even Molly, Molly, Ringwald is, Molly Ringwald. Yeah, she's and, good in it. Um, I don't know the guy. The guy that played Harold Louder, yeah. he was great. He was a perfect uh, for it. Um, Nick, the deaf guy, is played by uh, the guy who doesn't age. Oh, uh, I know who. I, his yeah. name's right there. I can't think of it. But every single actor in that film Rob Lowe Rob Lowe there yes. yeah it Rob Lowe Rob Lowe Rob Lowe you know yeah no but it, it's a great I love yeah there Amy Bishop <laughs> thank you yeah it uh I love I the stand <laughs> it, it is if, if you if you watch it through uh cable tv or I guess you call it free free to air tv lens from 1994 it's an excellent film no it is good you know it has a killer soundtrack you know it has don't fear the reaper um which is awesome and even like even the effects actually weren't that bad in it. No, they weren't. Like, and what they did was they leaned into what they could do, and they didn't try to do things they couldn't. You yeah. know, like the scene, like the up close filming of the scientists that are dead in the 
yeah. uh, in, in the enclosed, like they're, they're locked in the laboratory. That's awesome. And the person that falls face down in the soup and is still sitting there. So what, what, what do they call that disease again? Captain trips. Captain trips. Yeah. yeah. No, but like, even with, um, like even, and there's something about the nineties when they made somebody who was, uh, like quote unquote crazy, like that one where, uh, Nadine or oh, not no. Nadine, the other one that wore the tutu. Oh my God. I don't know where, her name like yet. She, where she's it's, shooting uh, at, uh, well, no, Tom she, and she comes Nick. on to Tom and Nick yeah. and they brush her off. And then all of a sudden she disappears and shows up a shirt shooting at him with a shotgun. Right. Like, but even that's creepier than what they can do now. I, why though? It's so weird. I know. I don't, right. It's just the way it's filmed because like they don't hold anything back. No, right? but, but they but, couldn't show much. There's yeah. no, there's no cursing in it. No, there's no, I mean, they show as much violence as they can. They yeah. show some skeletons. They show um, bodies dead in the street. But what? I think it's more creep. It's creepier though because we were younger. Yeah. So it's kind of, and then it kind of it affects you more, right? I can see that. Sure. You know, it. Um, yeah. I was trying to see if I could find the girl who played. I don't I think know. It was no. She, she had curly hair. Oh no, that was. Yeah, that's, that's Nadine, Nadine. There, Nadine Cross, Molly yeah. Ringwald. Uh, Gary Sinise, yeah. Uh, oh, Jamie Sheridan, yeah. He 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 was a perfect Randall Flag, mm -hmm. wearing them acid acid wash tight old blue jeans. Oh my god! And the cowboy and boots, the mullet, the mullet, and the mullet was I, great. I guess technically he was wearing a Canadian tuxedo, right? Because yeah. it was a jean jacket too. And, yeah, the uh, mullet was great. Oh yeah, and even Ruby D as Mother Abigail was perfect. Miguel Fier, he was uh, Lloyd. Uh, he he was perfect. And uh, oh yeah, that guy Matt Fuhrer. Fuhrer I, Trash can man. Is that the guy that played? Um, let's take a look here. Um, just hang on. I think he's the Canadian guy that plays. Just hang. No, Max Hedrum. Yeah, yeah, he plays Max. He was Max, the original Max Hedrum. I'm sure he is. I don't know how I pulled that out. That's a great post-apocalyptic film. If I've ever or a collapse film. If you've ever seen the made-for-TV um, oh, BBC movie, somebody. I, I got to apologize. About three years ago, somebody sent me a link to that from our community. It's like, Tim, you need to watch the Max Hedrum film. And I did, and I loved it. I, I wouldn't make you watch it, but uh, yeah. So I'm sure that's the guy that, yeah, because he, he did the voice for Max Hedrum and Pixel. So it must be. I'm surprised they don't have him known as, uh, yeah, he has such a very distinct face. Mm -hmm. Canadian. He actually looks like... Um, Is it Canadian? Oh, the guy from the lead singer Headstone? No, he looks like the father from Dawn of the Dead. That when they come in, he's the one that's bit on the hand. Oh yeah, yeah. Looks like him. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, there. Yeah, he played that. That's him. He played for for anybody under the age of forty. That's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Max Hedrum? <laughs> well, there he is. Uh, he also sold the new Coke for a while. It's um, okay. I don't know who he is either. You don't remember Max Hedrum? Not at all. <sighs> See, my favorite thing. Uh, for those of you who haven't, uh, it's a pet. Uh, I guess you wouldn't call it conspiracy. But last year when we were gone, I did some pre-recorded episodes, and one of them was famous network intrusions. Look up the Max Hedrum incident. It's pretty cool. For about three minutes, somebody interfered with a WGN signal during an episode of Doctor Who, and he was dressed up, well, basically right here like this, dressed up as Max Hedrum, and they had a piece of corrugated steel behind it. Really creepy. It's really cool. So anyway, yeah, and there's that's a scene from the, the movie. But yeah, he, uh, for those of you who don't know, I guess I'm just old and mm -hmm. strange, but. Yeah, I don't remember him at all. Yeah, but yeah, he was, he was around. He, he had a, an MTV show where he introduced uh, music videos. He did a, a new Coke commercial and he would like hesitate, be like, taste the Coke, 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 Coke. And, and he, he, he was done up, made look like a computer generated. No. no? Oh, you're missing out, darling. Well, yeah. What year was that? The eighties. Oh, well, um, see, see, I was in this thing called outside. Oh, right. <laughs> so. Well, guys, it was nice having Becky on the show tonight. She has to leave now. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't watch TV in the 80s. I actually played outside. Fair enough. So, uh, you know, that, yes. fresh air, sunshine, I, you know. I never made friends till later on, you know. So, I I just stayed inside and played Nintendo and, yeah. and watched uh, reruns of Columbo and Macmillan and Wife and McLeod and uh, I don't know what any of those are. <laughs> sure, you don't even ask. Your no, dad no, used to uh, watch those. Columbo, I do, yeah. but the Macmillan and Wife, I don't even I don't Really? Know oh my now. god. So, in the 80s, uh, A&E had all the old reruns of all those 70s and 60s um, 
cop shows. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. They were, yeah. <laughs> Team Becky. Listen here, guys. I used to go outside <laughs> from sun up to sunset. We would take a baseball bat and that's, a baseball that's glove. That's my story. Honey. Yes. My I story. know. I know. So <laughs> yes, we would, but I also used to watch a lot of TV and play a lot of video games. So yeah, I didn't. Hmm. I understand. It's okay. Uh, Wick is mainly just boom action stuff. I love John Wick, though. I I am so excited about the new movie coming out. It's just so. beautiful choreography. That's yeah. what I love about that film. It's and so good. Keanu Reeves is badass. Oh, it, oh yeah. Right? Like, yeah. No, I I love John Wick movies. All, it was like his comeback. Yep. And I've watched them all, and they have not disappointed. All of the YouTubers that I watch that I respect their um, opinions on films have all said that the latest one is the best one since the first one. Oh, nice. And it's like fucking three and a half hours long or something. It's insane. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. It, 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 they, they said it's like, I don't know, like a modern symph- symphony of action and violence. Well, I, and on like, I like them all, but the first one was my favorite. Oh yeah. It, because yeah. it, it's the one that started it, right? Yeah. That's what makes it good. Well, it has a lot and has a good, really good cast in it. Like and a good John story. Leguizamo. And, yeah. And, uh, uh, Theon from Game of Thrones. Yes, yeah. and no, and I'm... and the the main the main bad guy that he actually passed away after the first movie, okay. but he was really good. The 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 main uh, Russian mafia guy. Yeah, you know? Theon's yeah. father. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, cool. Mm. And yeah. And I think the black guy died too. Yes, the one that works at the hotel. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I like. He's a good actor. I yeah, liked him. he passed away too. Young. It's like fifty nine or oh, something. He wasn't very Jesus, old at all. Can no. you imagine? Anyway, um, yeah. so. My final film was Cabin Fever. I love that film. So, Like the original. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. So for some reason, they decided that um, after 15 years, it needed to be rebooted. And they made a, a they remade the movie 15 years later. Did we watch the remake? Oh, we did. We did. But you don't, I don't remember, remember because it, now. it was so horrible. And uh, Chris Dixon says, Keanu Reeves is a new age David Carradine. Calm, slow, and methodical. Yeah. Anyway, I was going to make a really inappropriate joke there that I won't. So No, no, I won't. I know. I, I, I caught myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, moving right along. Directed by Eli Roth, who made the Hostel films. He made Green Inferno and also played a character in Inglorious Bastards, I'm pretty sure. Which is funny that he I also acts. Movie. Oh, I fucking love that film. If it's... you haven't seen that movie, that movie is so Nothing good. will ever take the place of Pulp Fiction on my favorite Quentin oh, Tarantino film. Oh, but that's film. pretty close. But it is like, yeah. I mean, I, I'll admit it. I, this is the weirdest thing, but I fuck, I had tears in my eyes when they're shooting the shit out of Hitler <laughs> in the theater. I was like, oh my God. It was, I'm not going to say it. I almost think it's a better, a more well-crafted film, but... Yeah, I can't because Pulp Fiction has that place in my heart. You know, it was the movie that that introduced me to the love of film. Actually, Inglorious Bastards is a really good. Movie. It's like one A and one B, and then everything else yeah. is. I will say, Kill Bill has grown on me a lot over the years. And actually, and the one he just did too, um, Once Upon a Time, Time yeah. but that one was really good too. Much better than some of his other. Ones. Yeah, Hateful Eight was just okay. Um, the slave one, what was that one? Uh, uh, Django. That was just okay, also. Um, but uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if you haven't seen that one, that one is really good. And it's got, uh, and of course, it's got Brad Pitt oh, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. But they, um, uh, no, but it, it's a good movie. I actually watched it on the plane. Did you? Okay. Yeah, I was like, or no, going to. I'm like, I haven't seen that in a while. I'm going to watch that. I got to think, Brad Pitt plays a character in a lot of ways, that's very similar to his Ocean's Eleven character. Yeah. In, yeah. Well, in Once Upon a Time, he's a dirtbag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, he's kind of slimy yeah. and dirty, but slick. And mm-hmm. oh, yeah. It, I think he's like that in real life, though. Oh, I think so. I'd love yeah. to have a, a, a bourbon with him. He would be, yeah. Be an inter- he'd have some stories if, you know, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Stephen. Uh, oh, Tori said first time she gets to see you. She'll, you'll get to see her um, in person at, at uh, in Washington. So, yeah. Yeah, at uh, the Thrivalist Fair. So, well, I used to have a soft spot for Steven Seagal, and I think no, no, and mm-hmm. I think that had a lot to do with my dad. Yeah, it's okay. Um, my dad, like I, oh my God, I Dixon. could not tell you how many times my dad watched Under Siege. Right. And he you. loved that. Yeah. He loved Under Siege, and um, but then but then you hear more and more stories about Steven Seagal, and he's such. He's such a piece of trash, right? Like he's, like I don't know any. Uh, he, like that one fight where he got in. Who was? Who did he fight? Some 
Taekwondo guy. Oh, yeah, and pissed his pants. Or shit his no, pants. No, the guy <laughs> put him in a chokehold or something, knocked him out, and then Steven Seagal shit his pants. It was so funny when you read it, because he thinks he's some all high and mighty and everything. But, um... So, if you want to know more, <laughs> not really about what he's doing, but in case you're interesting, guys, or interested, this is one of my new favorite YouTube channels. It's, uh, it's technically called So Bad It's Good, but, um, Jason Brandt is the one who does it. Him and his wife and a friend watch old action films. Their best ones are Steven Seagal and not the old classics. Steven Seagal is still making films. He's old. He's fat. He waddles. I mean, I can't say much. I'm old and fat too. But he, but... um, but he's got, uh, he's like friends with Putin. Too. Yeah. 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 And he, he, he's insane. All his stuff. Yeah. So this is how bad his stuff has got. He, he basically shows up for a few days on set. He will film. He won't even do his ADR. So that's, uh, after, hmm, after something recording so basically what happens is a lot of times guys will go in and if, if their mouth doesn't line up or if they're not showing they'll reread their lines to record them better he has a stand-in who does his adr for him he's that lazy there's some of these movies they show he won't even stand up anymore well i i don't want to uh i don't want to say too like i with him but you see yeah. this picture right here yeah oh in the, the corner with the the must right there that right one. there yeah he looks like my dad. Yeah, he does, my my he? dad looked exactly like that. It's just funny. So, yeah, my I maybe that's why my dad liked him so much. Yeah, right, because um, he he looked exactly like that. But um, uh no, Steven Seagal. Like the the one that always stuck in my head was uh, no, go down. Okay. Um wasn't above the law it was the other one all right so I just i'll show you this so uh, okay his last film was 2019 so i guess he has finally stopped but until then he was making a film or two a year for like a million dollars in um i want to say it's like uh one of the foreign russian republics or something i can't remember what it's called but yeah you'll have to go down a ways like look that's only 2013 and okay, you haven't go down more. Yeah, no, the the one that you're not, that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, I'll take you to, to the, the bank. bank. The blood, the blood bank. bank. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Look that how was many... my dad's favorite movie besides Under Siege. I remember the first time I ever heard that. We yeah, were... you, yeah, Casey Ryback. Yeah. And then, no, Hard to Kill, Mason Hard... Storm. Yes. So, <laughs> the best Steven Seagal line. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? I'll take you to the bank. The blood bank. The and blood you're like, what, like, really? I mean... Okay, are you, are you a fucking vampire? Or well, because are you the, the politician help? would be like, and you could take that to the bank. And then he goes, and I'm going to take you to the blood bank. <laughs> Reminds me of... Um, it's like, I couldn't tell you how many times I watched Hard to Kill with my dad. Oh, he was... Oh. <laughs> and... It, he, but you know what, though? In those movies, he was actually a pretty good looking guy. Sure he was. Like, yeah. in those ones, like, he was tall and, and ripped and everything, but couldn't act for shit no <laughs> but i and you know i wasn't a seagal fan i grew up a schwarzenegger fan right oh that, well yeah you know, me too though yeah and you don't have to like one or the other you yeah. can like them both it's just i i wasn't a martial arts movie kind of guy i was a you know one guy takes on an army with you know like you know commando that's my i it, love commando it's the best action film ever made i think i mean how could you beat it right and yeah. uh Let's see how long it takes. Oh, no. He, yeah, I was going to say for Dixon to say Alyssa Milano, but she was a little young in that film. So. Uh, yeah, that would yeah. be a little <laughs> weird because yeah. I think she was like 12. 12. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, it yeah, Commando is the best action film, I think, or at least the best 80s action film for sure. And uh, um, God's, yeah, but Godzilla was once a little bitty lizard. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <nice. laughs> oh, my. Yeah, yeah poor, poor, uh, poor Godzilla. But yeah, so... I remember way back in the day, Under Siege 2, if you guys remember that, everybody made a big deal out of it. You're like, oh, yeah, um, Steven Seagal is going to be in it. And like 10 minutes in, or no, 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 executive decision. That's Exec the one I'm yeah, thinking Yeah, and of. he dies on the airplane. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what's, what's he do? He does like a stupid salute or something, doesn't he? And they shut the, the hatch and he blows off. And it's like, are you serious? <laughs> like, who's the boss? Yes, who's yeah. the boss? I, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> renegade butcher said replace blood with sperm and you would have a very unsettling uh yeah <laughs> that's actually really fucking funny though yeah now, but, but like okay. that picture there he's yeah. a nice looking guy oh yeah. yeah like looks like he's airbrushed there yeah know, but so. but he was like but like he just like from what i heard even back then he was a total prick. a dick yeah yeah ask john like guizamo so they were on a film together i think it might have been exit wounds the kind of his last big film that he did and 
he shows up. No, no, maybe. No, sorry. Let me back up. Saturday Night Live. When he hosted Saturday Night Live, he's banned from SNL. Mm -hmm. He can never host SNL again. When he showed up, they were trying to be like, okay, you need to make fun of yourself. It's part of the joke. Everybody loves it. He's like, I can't do that. And so when Steven Seagal shows up, he basically shows up. He's like, I'm the boss. What I say goes. So John Leguizamo thought that he was being funny. He thought it was a joke. So he starts laughing. Steven Seagal picks him up and puts his uh, elbow under his neck and pushes him against a wall and threatens to kill him. That's the type of dude Steven Seagal is. And he's also the type of guy that when he films movies the last few years, they would squish the picture. So if you watch it, whenever he's on screen by himself, they change the aspect ratio so it makes him look taller and skinnier. It I is, it. yeah. He's just, but he is awful. a big dude, though, right? Like, he is, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he really is. Well, no, um, same with Van Dam. I grew up on Van Dam movies. Too. I loved Van. Uh, I did. Yeah, I, I love think Van um, Universal Soldier and Bloodsport. Oh, were yeah. my two favorite. And and then there was the the <laughs> was it Double Impact, where oh, he, where yeah. he plays the twins. Yep. Yeah. So this is you, hun, right here. What's up? Tori says she grew up with her dad making decisions about family movie night. It was Arnie, Stallone, Seagal, and Norris. Just replaced Norris with Van Damme. Van Damme, yep. Yeah. This is exactly because there was a yep. lot of 80s action films I'd never seen. And you're like, oh, I've watched that. Let's watch it. I'm like, <laughs> I, I love you. That's all my dad ever made. That's all we ever watched. And Amy can vouch for it, too, because it was always it was always Arnie, Van Damme, Seagal. And like, and... They have um, a channel. I don't know if they have it in the States. Uh, what, what's that channel that my dad used to watch all the time? Oh, man. Um, uh, oh, the action? The action channel. It was channel. just called action. Yeah. A okay, action. Yeah. So um, it was action channel on cable. And every time we'd go in there and on the weekends, they would replay the same movie. And they would it would be Saturday and Sunday. And it would just loop the same movie. He sat there from Friday night till Sunday night and he looped under siege. I think he watched it like 40 times. Can you imagine? And it's just like, but it's just, he just loved his Steven Seagal movies and his Van Damme movies. But like Universal Soldier was my favorite. I loved Universal Soldier. And I don't know if I've ever, I, we finally watched it a few years but ago. But you know you why? It's because Dolph when it came out, no, oh. you got to see Van Damme's butt. Oh, true. And yeah. I don't know. I can't remember how old I was. I was like, oh, what's his butt? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but he was never really a good looking guy, but you got to see a naked butt. And they say that but, Van Damme was a much nicer guy than Scott No, Seagal. and I actually, I heard he's actually still. Because he never really, really nice. um, he never claimed to be anything he wasn't. Like both him and Seagal were absolutely, um, they, they were legit. Uh, martial artist uh, mm -hmm. is it Croft Maga or whatever that he does that Steven Seagal sure. nobody had ever done that before so he was good at it the problem was is that he was a dick and he lied about everything absolutely yeah. everything um and so eventually when it caught up with him people were like well we don't respect you you might be a martial artist but yeah you're not gonna well and Van Damme what what is, is he French um where is he from I think so. We can yeah. look. Because like out. he he was out of the limelight for a long time, but then he started coming back and he was doing those commercials. Commercials with stuff. the splits. Yeah. yeah. It it almost happens with a lot of these action. Um they 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 become big, then they get washed up, mm -hmm. and then eventually they become retro. And when they become retro, they're allowed to be a bit cool again. And yeah. People are like, Oh yeah, but okay. Like, but did he That's it, Aikido. Thank you. I now I'm, did he yeah. make any more movies though? I don't think he has. Uh, he was I'm making sure. some more too. They yeah. they both did. Uh let's see. Um let's see. He made but he I don't know if his was any better. Oh, and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Rambo. Can't tell you how many times I've watched Rambo. So he did We Die Young in 2019, The Bouncer 2018, a lot of junk films that mm -hmm. quite often included uh, like George St. Pierre or yeah. some some UFC guy, right? Well, whatever so, pays the bills. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, you have to, right? If you can show yeah. up. I mean, look at uh, poor um, Bruce Willis. For mm -hmm. the last 10 years of his career, he would show up for three days on set, make 500000 yes. to a million dollars. Belgium. Belgium. That's it. Yeah. I yeah. love his accent. Yeah. Yeah. Like and he had, so in the early 2000s. Oh, was, yeah. He was in the Expendables. Yes. He was in those. So this is what there. started it right here. This JCVD. It was a kind of pseudo documentary, but it wasn't real. It was, um, it kind of, it was like a hyper realized version of his life. And this is what, it was kind of like, do you remember um, Polly Shore is Dead? 
Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so that was kind of what they were trying to do with Pauly Shore was let's make a more serious but stupid kind of fake documentary to bring him back to limelight. Didn't mm-hmm. work for Pauly Shore, but it did work for John Clan Van Dam. And so, yeah. <laughs> Big try. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I like Kurt Russell. Yeah. Oh, I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. I've always loved yes. Kurt Russell. Snake Bliskin. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. Uh, big, big, believe it or not, Big Trouble in Little China. My grandmother had that on VHS because really? I think she had a crush on Kurt Russell. <laughs> she Just, had a crush on a lot of guys. No, she had a. It was Kelly Gruber from the baseball or from the Blue Jays, and it was Kurt Russell and Kevin Costner. And I know if she was still around and she's seen Kevin Costner in Yellowstone, she would be swooning. Oh, yeah. She just absolutely loved him. There is Kelly Gruber. He is a knockoff for Dave Coulier off of (laughs) um, Full House right here. Check him out. He he was, let's see if we can find him here. There he he is. Yeah, but there's a better picture. The 90s, look at that. Look at that glorious (laughs) mullet. That was, yeah, he is, uh, yeah. (laughs) Really, you could put him next to... To Uncle Joey on, and they they were identical. Well, so we went down to Dunedin, yes, Florida, and my grandmother got Kelly Gruber's autograph, and it was Roberto Alomar and Kelly Gruber, and I think it was Roberto Alomar handed the baseball back to her, and she rubbed his hand, and the whole day she was like, his hand was so soft. Isn't that sweet. <laughs> now <laughs> now he's kind of a bit of a I don't know yeah, womanizer but, or something, right? But yeah, yeah, but it was yeah, but those were her men. And I know she'd be swooning over Kevin Costner in Yellowstone right now. Oh, yeah. If he comes back to it. That man has aged very well. Oh, I guess he has. Like a fine wine, for sure. Yeah, like he's aged very well. And I think Yellowstone was made for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like he's... What about Jackie Chan, RPA? Uh, He was... uh... I don't like Jackie. Oh, but man! No, no, he's a real martial artist, but his his it's his movies. Yeah, yeah. but they but when he was so in what ninety five or ninety six when um what was the Brooklyn film that he put out when the, his big film that brought him to North America? Yeah, we, a, a Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, and when that came out, we watched that two or three times down at Lynn Bercy's house where we, that's where we watched our movies. Remember I told you, we'd, we'd get down to the convenience store. We'd pick out a VHS. We'd bring it back, sit on the coach and watch it on the old floor model color TV. And we loved, I'd never see anything like it. It blew my mind because it's not like we had the internet and we could look up like drunken master, which was his stuff from the eighties. Right. Uh, so you didn't know who he was. And then he shows up and he does all his own stunts. You're like, and yeah. it was the first movie that had, um, like when well, maybe not the first, but at the end it had uh, scenes like cutouts and things. So it showed where he broke his foot and he had to finish the movie with a yeah. broken foot. And I was like, Oh man. No, no, like, no, like he's incredible at doing his own stunts and everything. But no. I find what happened was he did these movies, but then they started doing those like Disney version movies. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> like where they just got ridiculous and you're just like, Oh, these, these suck so bad. And it's a shame, but again, that's what kind of happens. Right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Renegade Butcher says, I like how in Expendables, they just read his resume. He plays a big dumb idiot, but he's like a physicist or some shit. I, are they talking, are you talking about, I think they're still talking about, where was it? Um, Dolph Lundgren, I think I'm not sure, but, uh, yeah. And great doing his own stunts. I used to go to Chinatown and watch Chinese Kung Fu. Oh, that would have been cool. Mm. Wow. Stuff we would never get to see. That that's really neat, Yozik. I love I love stories like that. That's neat, but yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, and well, and Sylvester Stallone was another one. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? I, I like I like Sylvester. I liked him. The problem was for me, the sun set and rose on Arnold Schwarzenegger as a kid. Yeah, I just every, I mean, he was the Terminator, and yeah. somehow I got to see. I don't know how I got to see um, Commando so young because Mom and Dad wouldn't let me watch. They, they they rented Die Hard and I had to sit out in the living room I love Die and, Hard. and kind of peek my head around the corner to watch it for ages because they wouldn't let me watch it. But somehow I was allowed to watch Commando. Well, when did Die Hard come out? Uh, 89? Eight, yeah, because I remember watching it when it came out. So I would have only been 10. Right. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. So yeah. I would only been eight. Yeah. My my dad let me watch it. Yeah. I'm sure it was 89. He didn't care. Like He used to put these movies on and he'd be like, uh, well, most of the time, like... If they were really bad, it was the famous "Don't cut your mother." Yeah, but uh, but usually, or hmm. and then it was like, just don't repeat anything. It was actually eighty-eight, babe. So oh, I was okay. seven. You were nine. nine. Yeah. yeah, 
I remember watching. I love Die Hard, and I still love Die Hard. It is like the f- number one Christmas movie. Here we go. Yeah, you guys are all assholes. Everybody has to bring. It's not a fucking Christmas movie. It's it a movie. is a Christmas. It's movie. a movie that happens at goddamn Christmas time. There's a difference. It's a Christmas. Simple movie. as that. I don't know why. Martinson said he made Ashley watch Commando a few weeks ago. I love Commando. It's perfect. There's there's nothing yeah. better. Right down to the fact that he fucking flips that little car and then it's drives totaled, him. drives off, and, and there's great. not a dent. It's like. <laughs> Pristine. It's Britain, but I like it when he's hanging. Remember, Sully, I was going to kill you last. I lied. I lied. <laughs> Drops him I off lied. the cliff. And you know damn well he was he was holding dude. Like, I mean, not yeah. over the cliff, but yeah. he could do that. He could pick, well, maybe not today, but in his in his heyday. You know what? He, he still looks good. Oh, yeah. Like, he, like he's aging pretty good. Like, what is he? Almost 80? Yeah, I think yeah, so. In the 70s? Did you see the other day they filmed it? Did you hear about the, the pothole they filled in? Yeah, but it wasn't a pothole. Well, it wasn't, but I think it's just the city making it. So it was, they dug up a hole to access gas lines. And they're like, well, we had plans on fixing it by August. And I'm like, fuck you. You know, and they're like, well, he used asphalt to fill in a cement hole. Well, you know what? He did something. <laughs> yeah. Just... What are they going to tell the Terminator now? Right. Yeah. I'll terminate you. <laughs> You're not going to tell the Terminator no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes. Um, Home Alone is a Christmas film. Die Hard is not a Christmas film. Die There's Hard a difference. Is... Here, let, let me explain, okay? The story of Home Alone is central to Christmas. The story to Die Hard happens to take place at Christmas. There is a difference. There is Because nothing... they're having a Christmas party and they emphasize the Christmas lights, the trees, and I think even the cop it's, says Merry Christmas it's in it. background decorate. It has nothing to do with Christmas. He it, says it, Merry Christmas. No. Yes, no. he does. The no. cop who gives him the ticket. Nope. He goes, Merry Christmas. I'll, I'll die on this hill. I'll yeah. never agree. Now, you'll never get me to agree. So mm. it's a movie that happens at Christmas. This, was, this, was, this wasn't this was even an issue five years ago. It was a Christmas. And all of a sudden, some nerds on 4chan decided, we're going to call... Um, Die Hard, a Christmas film, and then we're going to get everybody pissed off about it. So you're just mad because nobody wants to watch <laughs> National Lampoons anymore. <laughs> yes, they do. Chris Dixon will watch Lampoons with me. Well, then you'll have to watch it with him because nobody else wants to watch it. Everybody wants to watch Die Hard. Hang on a minute. When we had our watch party for for this year for the workshop, yeah. See, he's literally coming home for Christmas. So he well well. <laughs> He's coming home from, oh. and the police officer rips up the ticket and says, Merry Christmas. He's not coming home for Christmas. It has nothing to, it. Yes, it does. Christmas just happens in the background. No. So. No, it is 100% a Christmas movie. And you know what? Um, I'll get Amy and Barrett on. Amy and Barrett are watching Die Hard next year. That's fine. Well, you guys can go to her house then. <laughs> because nobody likes National Lampoons. <laughs> yes, now I have a machine gun and a Santa hat. All right. Fine. Fuck you guys. Mm-hmm. You're all picking on me tonight. Yeah, or, or, yeah. He said, uh, "I'll watch National Lampoon's and a Christmas Story, as well as Die Hard from a Christmas List movie." I'll- you know what? I'd watch National Lampoon's, but the problem is we've watched it every year for like the past seventeen years, and it's not why? Funny. Why? Why is that a problem? It's not funny. How anymore. is that an issue? It's not funny. It <laughs> is funny. How can it not be funny? It's, not it, funny. it's always when that ice when he oh my god when he falls off the roof it's when the ice goes through the neighbor when he, when he oh yeah no. It's Everything about it is so good. It, it's the best Christmas movie ever made. The best Christmas comedy ever made. And I, I, I would go with second would be Home Alone. But yes. But why are we at Christmas? It's not a Christmas film. Die Hard is a film that takes place at Christmas. Well, National Lampoon's isn't a Christmas film. <laughs> so the film. It takes. The film. It takes. At Christmas. The film Christmas title, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, is not a Christmas Christmas film. is just in the background. <laughs> You're so full of shit. <laughs> Squirrel! Yep, there we go. Thanks for the distraction, Martinson. I needed that. Oh, dear. Yes, my favorite line from any... Oh, speaking of favorite lines, go back to Cabin Fever. I didn't quite finish. My absolute favorite scene in all of Cabin Fever, they pull up to the back roads country store, and there's this rather touched little boy Pancakes. sitting on the... <laughs> Uh, on the deck of this rundown country store. And for some reason, he jumps off, does a slow motion karate kick, yells pancakes, and then bites the dude on the arm. It is the fucking most random scene you will ever see. Nobody knows why it was in the film. Well, I think it's supposed to imply that because the kid was sick. Right. And that it can be transmitted through bites as well. I right. think it's supposed yeah. to imply that. Yeah, and he was probably infected from the body being in the river and the, everybody. Yeah. yeah, well, like, yeah, but like the kid 
gets infected and dies too, right? Yes. They, yeah. Because yeah, they all eventually. Yeah. But I think it, yeah, but I think it's to imply that it passes through bites as well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it says, yeah, it says uh, the video looks like you're overreaching. Let's see. Here. <laughs> yeah. We got to figure out, maybe I wonder if we can get ourselves a wide lens uh, video camera for it because like this one doesn't quite do it because you try to well, actually that's not bad. not bad maybe we should have just went with that one oh well whatever it works in this one if i turn it too far then the black and yeah you pick up all the junk and then i in the pick background. all his crap in the background yeah all my liquor and whatnot so you know <laughs> things that shouldn't be shown on no i'm just kidding <laughs> Our CIA or CSIS agents probably watching tonight anyway. They're going to come so, take your stuff. Yes. So any other films we haven't mentioned tonight on our outbreak list, guys, that we might have missed? What Did we have any other ones, Baby Doll? I don't have any other ones. Um, I went through, like, there's always, like, World War Z and all that. But they kind of, like, they're on my zombie list. More yeah. So. Oh, see, he, he that was Becky's very first one tonight for Ev. Bird Box. And yeah. It was okay. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. You know? No, I'm I'm trying to think, but there's not like there's not well, Last of Us. Yes, Last uh, of Us was yeah. great. I love that. That would be added to um probably our next zombie uh yes. kind of thing, right? So Gremlins is a Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Christmas is in the background. Oh fuck you guys. A whole lot of you. So anyway, oh. I was gonna do an episode on conspiracy films tonight. Mm. And, and since we didn't, we're not really going to go through the whole list, but why don't we talk about this movie? Because somebody in our, I don't know, survival podcast, anarchist, whatever extended community, you guys just kept talking about they live. And I had never seen it until about three years ago. And I ended up laying down one night and watching it in bed while you were sleeping. And it, it's a great film. It's a John Carpenter film. Have you ever, have you seen it? I think it? I have. Um, if I haven't seen the full movie, I think I've I've seen bits and pieces, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure if I've seen the whole. I mean, movie. it is. Yeah, as far well, it was Roddy Piper was all these two yeah. guys. They have the greatest fight ever, the greatest bro fight you'll ever see. They kick the shit out of each other in a back alley, and then they're like best friends when they're done, you know. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's, it, it's actually a really yeah. It is a black and white, right? Uh, is it black? And no, white? no, it's no. not. It's color. Um, so let's see. I don't know if I can show you how. But like he can see that they're like. Yeah. So they're aliens. Yeah. Who um, are inhabiting people's bodies, makes them act weird. It, Of course, yeah. it's an allegory for consumerism, right? So yeah. basically be a slave, do what they tell you, buy the things you need to buy, all of that. Right. And so he can see what he finds these magical sunglasses from somewhere. I can't remember okay. how he gets them and he just sees them. And it's uh, it's cool. Like it. I love John Carpenter. He does his own score, like his own music I'm, for all his own. I'm pretty sure I have I have seen it. It's worth oh the yeah. faculty's good too. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I like that. No, I do like the faculty. Uh let's bring it up here. See if we can... uh, I'm not a huge fan of Katie Holmes. Yeah, I know. I understand. And her constant <laughs> that shaking she does. But um no, the faculty was good. So let's see what he wrote his his directing, and it's pretty cool that he his his music's pretty cool because he does all. I say a lot of, of yeah. his is Halloween. Yeah, yeah Halloween, um, the Kurt Russell movie. There, I want to call it. Um, that was a remake itself. The one that takes place in like the Antarctica um, base I know, or whatever. The thing. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Let's go back here further. So, was his first movie? Well, we'll go back a little bit further yet. Back, back, back. There we go. So his first big film was Halloween, mm -hmm. which was great. Then he did The Fog, which was remade later, but people <laughs> like that one. Escape from New York. Oh, yeah. Like I said, Snake Bliskin, right? Yep. Then, he, then, he, then he wrote Halloween 2, and <laughs> I knew he'd say Dawson's Creek. Actually, so. you know what? Amy and I were just talking about Dawson's Creek earlier, and because I grew up through the hype yep. with Dawson's Creek, and uh, we were we literally were talking about that earlier. And I told her, I said, like, I used to watch it, but I think I only watched it because other people were watching it. Yeah, I could never understand why people liked yeah, it. Yeah, and, I, well, I had a huge but, crush on um, Joshua Jack. Sure, I get it, yeah. But, um, I, I did, I liked, uh, what's her face? But so. um, I think I only watched it because... Everyone else watched yeah, yeah, I think that's what a lot of people... But I, I could, Joey was dreaming. But I couldn't tell you <laughs> about one episode. I know. I get you. I, like, cause there was no, there was no episodes that stuck. Same with um, Melrose Place. 
Yeah, I, I only that, yeah. watched it because other people were watching it. And I was like, oh, yeah, did you see the episode? Meanwhile, I didn't really give a shit about any of it. I know. Like, you know, like Joshua Jackson. Yeah, I could watch him all day. But, like, I don't know. I just, I, I don't remember any of the episodes. I remember Joey being really annoying. And I remember Dawson being a whiny little bitch. But oh, I just. The, the memes. Remember the memes of Dawson with his yeah. private? Because <laughs> so that's true. all he did. Yeah. Right. Oh. And, uh, but yeah, he was just a whiny little, whiny Lost little girl. And... Somehow. Let's bring it back up there. Yeah. There Nathan, we go. Just bring that. One. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. But I don't, I couldn't tell you about any of the episodes. No, it was what it was. Yeah. I don't yeah. <laughs> Heather Locklear. Poor Chris Dixon. Heather Locklear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was on, um, yeah. What was that? She was on Melrose Place, right? She was. Yeah. Yeah. I, of course, I watched the other one, the one that came before that, Beverly Hills Nine or Two One Zero. Oh, I watched Nine yeah. or Two One Zero. You know the guys; they were like forty or whatever, you know, and uh, playing eighteen year olds. Now but... I did watch Nine or Two One Zero, and I did like that. Yeah, I yeah. did. I did too. But I think I that's why I watched Melrose Place because because. What about Saved by the Bell? Did you watch it? I fucking love Saved by the Bell. Oh, it's blurring. Oh, why is it doing that? There we go. Bring that. There we go. No, uh, I did watch Saved by the Bell. Oh boy, there we go. Sorry, but, guys. Um, but that, but that they were only half hour episodes, right? Yeah, yeah. and they, they always played in the morning too, right? Remember? Yeah, but um, Melrose Place and Nine Hundred Two and O and and all that they were hour episodes, one day a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just never, I never watched Melrose Place. It was, yeah, because wasn't that a spinoff of Nine Hundred Two One O? Or am I crazy? I don't think it was a so. spinoff of something. Why is our camera doing this now? Probably because it's on both of us. No, it, well, maybe yeah, it's trying to autofocus on both of us. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll make do. You guys can hear us. You don't need to see me anyway. So No, they, um, the only thing I remember on Melrose Place is when Sydney got hit by the car and she died. <laughs> right. And I was like, yeah, she did. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't remember anything else about it. Yeah, you said, in my, you always said, am I drunk or are things fading in or out? Yeah. It, um, this cam, my camera keeps dying. Yeah, we got to get a, anyway, that, that's going to be my next investment. I did upgrade. So this camera right here, this is my main one that makes me look so handsome when I do solo episodes. <laughs> but the other cameras we use are, are older ones. Um, my next purchase is the third monitor to finish upgrading all my monitors to 22-inch uh, curved screens. And then after that, it's going to be a couple new cameras. Then we're going to move this whole thing over here. And then hopefully, maybe you can have a view of my bald head while I'm talking or something. Oh, no. nice. No, it'll be like a couple different uh, camera angles or something. It'll be fun. But TJ Hooker, that was... What's his face? Wasn't it um, Captain Kirk? Am I? I don't know. William Shatner? I've never seen it, but I, I might be wrong uh, about that. Let me see if I'm. I think my dad might have watched. Yeah. That how... Oh, she... Heather Locklear was on. I don't know how the hell I remembered that, but yeah, that dude's ninety-two. We seen oh, him the I other know. day. And yeah. He still looks. <laughs> yeah, Lee Major. Oh, Lee Major. That was, was Lee Major, the six million dollar man, or the million. Or... I think. So. Or no, I think I got him mixed up with Lee Major. I don't know who that is. Lee Major. Let's look him I, up. I recognize the name. He but had I don't... a show. Wow. Yeah, six million dollar man, Lee Major. There you go. Yeah. Is he still alive? He can't. You be know which one my dad used to watch was the original Hulk. Oh. Um, oh, with um. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. With the black Lou Ferrigno. Yeah. Oh my god. I remember that one. That was so th those seventies uh, superheroes. That one in well, actually, you know what? What's her face didn't look too bad. Wonder Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she. She wouldn't actually have been an Amazon or anything, but no. she was too skinny to be an Amazon. But, you know, she was, yeah. Yeah, I read a story about Linda Carter. Um, when she got the job as, as Wonder Woman, I think she said that she went in the, uh, to the audition. And when she got the job, she had like $6 left in her bank account or Isn't something that like cool? that. Yeah, like I can't remember the exact amount, but she had like no money. And when she got that one. Zach Morris. So what is so? Um, who put this up here? Where did I see it? RPA says, "Look up." Um, I think I think this was say Zach Morris is trash because I just found this. It's a funnier die. Um, which well, actually, Zach was he was trash. Oh, sure he was. Yeah, yeah he was absolutely. You know, yeah. it, honestly, not so much when he was younger. It's when he got older. Yeah, he was self entitled. Well, self entitled, and he was a womanizer. And it's kind of funny because I'm yeah. going back watching uh, King of the Hill with the girls. Yeah. And Hank Hill was not a very good dude, but none I, of those 90s sitcoms were, but look at Homer. But the problem was, <laughs> Homer I, wasn't good. I think that, but, um, when it comes down to it, Hank, 
it's because of his dad. I mean, he was, yeah. he was, his dad was abusive. I know we're fucking talking about a cartoon character like he's real, but that's, <laughs> he, he's messed up because of, uh, you know, his dad. So there is what that is. And um, <laughs> Amazon's, oh yeah, they did only have one boob, didn't they? Amazonians, because they cut off, they would, they, they cut off one. Was that so that their, um, their oh, weapon strap would hold better? Maybe. Or was that just, uh, sure. yeah. But I don't know. What do you think, Mrs. Cook? We've been two hours. Yeah. Been a good night. Yeah, it was fun. I messaged you earlier and asked you, I'm like, you, you sure you're feeling up for it? She's like, I love our Friday night shows. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chris Dixon and Gail Gadet. So she's, it sounds like she's all done as a Wonder Woman. Hey? Yeah, they fired her. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, Which really sucks. Like, I'm not a huge fan, but she was Wonder Woman. Sure she was. But. But I do have faith last... in James Gunn. Oh, Wonder Woman movie 84 was, was fucking awful. Was awful. If that was a, if that movie had to hit it out of the park, she probably would still be Wonder Woman. You know what though? But the thing is though, um, it would like, we had this discussion a couple weeks ago. It's like they, the same shit they're doing with Henry Cavill. Mm. Henry Cavill is Superman. I don't care what anybody says. Archery. He is. Sure. Superman. Yep. And, um, Ben, like, Ben Affleck as Batman, you could go back and forth, right? <laughs> yep. Like, but I think Christian Bale was a better Batman. Oh yeah. But Ben Affleck, the new Batman, oh. he was so he was incredible. On, I mean, he yeah. was he was uh, Bruce Bruce Wayne. He played Bruce yeah. Wayne perfect, but he was also a killer Batman. That scene where he jumped through the window, goes into that room, and just decimates all of those like SWAT guys or whatever, like hand to hand combat. That <laughs> was fucking Batman. That but was like, awesome. and but you could go through the whole DC universe and like uh and even um well henry cavill is superman yeah but then uh uh the one who plays the flash um, oh yeah um, i i ezra yeah, El, ezra yeah ezra miller yeah um he's got his issues yeah and everything about i don't care he's the flash i don't care that is the best flash i have ever seen he is, he's perfect yeah but i will say grant gustin who played him on the cw he's really good too but yeah. he's not the flash. Like it, it's like when you see them on screen and you grew up with the comic books and then when you go to see it on screen and it's like, holy shit, it brings the comic book to life. Yeah. it does. Like, and it did that for me with Henry Cavill and Gail Gita and Ben Affleck and Ezra Miller. Like it, it what about brought the sexy Hawaiian. What's his name? Uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. He is Aquaman. Yeah. I don't even care. But like, but it just, it seems like they took the comics and put it right on the screen. Yep. And now James Gunn's going to screw it all. No, up. he's not going to. Yes, he, he is. I have complete faith in James I don't, Gunn. I don't have any faith in him. Remember how... Oh, come on. The the new Suicide Squad was fucking amazing. You loved that. I didn't like the new one. Yes, you did. We all laughed our asses off in the I theater. I was... Uh, no, correction. I was only <laughs> laughing at the shark. Well, the shark was funny. The movie was... And, and the rat. Yeah. Those were and, the only funny parts. And you parts. fucking loved the Guardians of the Galaxy. Not only the first one. Yeah, well. But the like, second one was pretty good, too. Yeah, no, he is going to destroy... The we'll DC. see. Well, no. I hope not. How can you destroy it? It hasn't been that good to begin He's with. He's destroyed it because he fired Henry Cavill and Gail Godot and Ezra Miller and Ben Affleck. Yes. He's destroyed it. So. Well, I don't... Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I love you. We'll agree to disagree. So. No, come on. Listen, it's okay to be wrong and not agree. Have you right? seen so. the new reviews on uh, Gerard Rivera? No, who's that? I don't know. For who um, the Watcher. Oh, Liam. Oh, as bad is it? It's horrible. Well, yeah. Because Henry Cavill takes these parts and he's a method actor. Sure. And he turns these parts right, into proper him, British dude. And then they, because he, he quit the Watch or yeah. the Witcher. Sorry, yeah. he quit that because he is. Uh, if you read any stories about him, he is like the biggest nerd in the entire world. He plays he plays World of Warcraft. And I heard that, right? yeah. So he knows the whole series of The Witcher, and they were going the wrong way with it. And he said, "I'm not going to be involved with this because it's going to disappoint a lot of fans." I like I I get yeah. that somebody then, who puts his money where his mouth is, right? Yeah, and then he probably lost now they money like for Liam it, right? Neeson, so. like Liam Hemsworth, like come on. Yeah. Right. So, uh, for Ev says he is Superman until they choose the next dreamy eyed guy. They said Crystal Reeves couldn't be replaced. Then Peter Welling, uh, Brandon Routh, the, he was uh, he was the yeah. worst Superman ever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Peter Welling was good in Smallville. If they cast oh Timothy Chalamet, the, no, I will be so okay. Pissed. Hold, hold no. on a minute though. No, he would be your prototypical Gen Z 
fucking Superman. Yeah, and he weighs like 110 pounds, and he's like he'll show up wearing seven. He'll be wearing skinny jeans, and he has curly and he'll, hair. He'll yeah. announce his pronouns before he starts, and he'll be like, "I'm Superman, and I like all of you guys." But You're you know all what, good though, people. I okay, I love Christopher Reeve. I'll never speak ill of him. Yeah. He was not my Superman. No, Henry no. Cavill is yeah. my Superman. Yeah, because yeah, and, he was a little before our time, right? Yeah, so. and but I never thought of him as Superman. I and when I read the Superman comics, when I look at Henry Cavill, that's who I envision when I'm reading the comics. Yeah, and reading this, that that's who he is. Yep. Yeah. No, he is good. Absolutely. Carrot Top is who. Oh, Jesus. oh, could you imagine? Best Joker, Heath Ledger. Could yeah, you? I'm gonna yeah. say Heath Ledger, but you know what? Jared Leto did do good. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 he was he okay. He did do good, but I would go Heath Ledger, then Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson, then Jared Leto. I'd probably go back to the old. I um, can't remember the guy's name right now. Uh, he was a fairly famous actor that played the Joker on the uh, the sixties version. Uh, yeah, he was a good Joker too. Oh, but, that Bud Light bullshit! Oh, I got. I don't. We know don't even you, need to talk about that. No, have no you I don't read, want to talk about. Have it. you read the story about this one? I just yeah. Okay, he's know. on TikTok, and. Uh, there is a oh, I forgot. Well, there is a lot of crap going around about him where okay yeah he is a transgender but the problem is he puts an emphasis on the fact that he's a transgender that wants to look like a 12 year old. Oh. And that is the problem with him. He he dresses like one, he acts like one, he behaves like one, but he's a 29 year old man. And it there there's so much wrong with him. Who just, and who okay I, I, we don't, I, I really don't normally talk about this shit. Who the fuck thought it was a good idea to do this? How how who who thought? I don't know. Anyway, he, he you yeah. know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of James Charles. Mm. But James Charles, well, we all know what yeah, happened to him. So. But James <laughs> Charles at least acted like a thirty year old man. Right. This one here is a twenty nine year old man who is a transgender, which. No problem with it. That if that's your life, that's your life. But why are you trying to act like a twelve-year-old girl? Right. Like that. That that is wrong on so many levels. And he he dresses like one. He talks like one. He it it's ridiculous. Like, and I I, I don't under or or I say she dresses like one. She talks like yeah. It, it is wrong on so many levels. And for Bud Light to be supporting that and backing that up, that is wrong on a lot of levels ah, too. It's messed up. Yeah, it is. Like it it's on that. Yeah. borderline you know uh, uh, no it and it's crashing and burning for him so. yeah and if you have in ever week, seen if won't. you have ever seen him on tiktok <laughs> he is he is uh or she is no, an awful you're human fine being. you don't no, have to she's an that. awful human being if you ever see her on tiktok she's awful chris dixon said bud light did more for stopping drinking in three days and aa did in 80 years well because they need to do their research on these people before they start slapping them on their campaigns I right know. disney hasn't researched anything for the last five fucking years no so. but like but no but it's the same thing baby i, I know told but, you. But, this, but this but this person is is awful right like on some of his on some of her tiktoks she's wearing outfits that would fit a 12 year old girl. And she looks like, like it's just, it's, it's messed up. It's, it's messed up. Messed it's not up. Right. And no. yeah, it is what I, I don't, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I, oh, it's just fucking messed up. It I, is. And uh, I like, it's awful. I, yeah. and he needs to be shut down. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And, and they will. It's just yeah. funny. It, I, it, it is absolutely, it was the most insane thing I've ever heard of. I, I don't know. It will, it's it's gonna fucking it's gonna crash and burn. It's gonna hurt them. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, it is. They need to and, shut this one. Like they and there was actually a news story I was watching the other day, and uh, it had uh, a, a transgender man on there who was a woman, and he said that or she said that um, for her to say something along the lines of the terms of they them he or she they she she said it was the most ridiculous thing she has ever heard mm -hmm. and she said the thing is though you have to get someone like me to say that as opposed to someone who isn't transgender to say it yeah right and and she made a, a perfect point she said like it's completely ridiculous she said a whole bunch of people were stuck in their house during covid and they just came up with all these terms because they had nothing better to do and it makes them look bad so, and it's awful. And that's, you know, when we, when you yeah. talk about the free market and here's the deal guys, and this, this is what pisses people off beyond yeah. anything. And uh, I didn't think we'd go here, but we did. So, yeah, we're here. yeah no, I know. So <laughs> that's the beauty of the free market yeah. is if people don't like shit, you don't have to buy it. 
No. The problem is, is that certain people in our society look at it and say, guess what? Um, I shouldn't have to respect the free market. The problem is you don't get a choice because the market is the market is the market and it's going to fucking market. And this is exactly what just happened. And that's it. Simple as that, because people are not going to buy shit they don't agree with. And no matter how much you try to drive it down their throat, if they don't fucking agree with it, this is what happens. Well, and and the other thing, too, that I was reading a story about is the whole how all these major companies are taking this whole rainbow and draw and driving with it. Right. Right. They don't have the right to do that. Like the whole point of like, um, uh, like LGBT, uh, the flags and everything is that that's, that's their symbolism. Sure. Like these major companies have no right to take this flag and start plastering all over and everything like that. They, that that's theirs. Okay. That, that is what they want to do. That is something that, they have worked for because like, you know, like, like going in the bank. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. But what, what, what right does CIBC have to take that? I know. And like, they don't need the LGBT community does not need the assistance of these big corporations. I think it's, it cheapens it to be honest. They do not need the assistance of these corporations to tell people that they have to accept the fact that there's LGBTs in this world. Right. They have fought too hard to be accepted on their own, that these big corporations don't have the right to steal that from them. And it, and there was a big story about it. Oh my. And it just makes me, it just pisses me right off. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. No, no it, it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Like my, my best friend, it belongs yep. to the LGBT community and he, they have no right. Right. Oh dear. I don't even, oh, uh, that, that, yeah, that's enough for tonight. That's funny. Oh, well, this was fun, baby. I always enjoy it. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. These Friday nights are becoming like a uh, little well, vanity to endorse the NRA. Uh, National Rifleman's Association. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't follow anything. That's okay. Them. Anyway, but yeah, this is a lot of fun. This is like uh, Dave and Mary with their uh, Friday night, their uh, late night anarchy or late night liberty or anarchy. liberty late night. That's where we just, just fucking rant, but it's fun. No, you know? I like, you know yeah. what? I, I work all week. I can't rant. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, you have to be. I come on rap. here and I rant to people who come on have, have rant and well, yeah. Oh, yeah, geez, yeah. you get me started on something. I could be here all night. Imagine if they were drinking. Yeah, <laughs> I get drinking. I get saucy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is what yeah. it is. Well, guys, this was fun. Want to go out and watch a movie, maybe? Uh, Are you too no, tired? I'm tired. Too I'm tired. Going to bed. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go to bed then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I always appreciate you. These Friday nights have become a lot of fun. I, I like kind of having a theme to each each night of the week and uh, the weekends are fun. Sunday's the interview. Thursday's the deep dive. Friday's the laid back, shoot the shit. And Saturday's kind of fill you in on what's going on. So with that guys, as always stay happy, stay healthy and have a great week.